This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions. Welcome everybody. It is championship time. We're so excited to be talking about these incredible divisions how we break them out, how we're going to analyze them, how we're going to break them down. It is going to be a great time tonight. If you didn't see already, we're going to be going through an alphabetical order for all these divisions as well, too. So lots of great teams for it. Um, real quick, let's introduce ourselves. We have uh, half of our uh, panelists uh, on here, our correspondents as well. And then we'll bring on the other ones uh, afterwards as well, too. So we'll be covering Archimedes, Curie, Daly, and Galileo. Uh, and then we'll uh, move over, bring on a new crew to bring on Hopper, Johnson, uh, Milstein, and Newton as well, too. But uh, let's real quick go around the horn, starting with Adam. Do you mind introduce yourself real quick? Hi, my name is Adam. Uh, I'm a college student at Purdue, and I'm affiliated with Team 4272 Maverick Robotics. My name is Ryan Swanson. I'm the head coach for Team 6045, and uh, I'm excited to be attending the Curie Division, and I'm excited to talk about it as well. My name is Scott Hassock. I'm a mentor for Team 1987, the Bronco Pots from Lisa, Missouri. Hi, my name is Angel. I'm a mentor and alumni of Team 4610 out of the First and Texas District. Well, welcome, everybody. And let's go through a little bit uh, what we're going to be covering tonight, how we're going to cover it, things like that as well. Obviously, we have uh, eight divisions that we'll be going through on here. Each one of our correspondents, you can see which division that they're going to be covering uh, on air. Like so we'll be going through the first four. We'll take about a two, three minute break to bring on our new set of people and then run through the other four divisions as well, too, if you're watching live. So a couple things with that. Each one of our uh, correspondents was assigned to pick out eight teams, only eight out of everything. Think about that. It's like 10% or just around that of the teams. It's a tough assignment and meant to be tough as well, too, because we want to have you uh, let us know who we missed, who should be in certain areas chat. So feel free if you're watching live, put it in the live chat if you're uh, watching afterwards drop it in the comments as well too uh because uh you know all these are 100 percent correct right that's the way that we're rolling with this is we're 100 percent right so now let us know uh as well so every single correspondent is going to have uh two locks so locks are teams that these are the two teams we are expecting they're going to pair up together win the division these are going to be like your, your your number one seed working together uh through the division uh these are the two teams we picked out now think about that it's only two it's not four or five or eight or something like that just two right so it's a very very tough decision to make in each one of these divisions. Then we have our contenders that will be showing on screen. Contenders are teams that could really end up challenging our lock picks. Maybe these contenders pair up as like a third seed and take out the number one seed or something like that. Uh, so they're allowed to pick, our, our correspondents will pick either three or four of those. Uh, and then in dark horses, these are teams that uh, are either uh, lesser known or maybe had a little bit more, uh, not as the performance we were hoping out of them, but we think are gonna have a really great shot uh, at in their division could really be that disruptor in the division as well and they're allowed to pick two or three of them so a total of eight as we go through on here as we're recording this live real quick do you want to uh, make a comment that there are uh, different global uh, com conflicts happening right now that may impact some teams arriving into championships this is breaking as we're actually recording this as well uh, right now however we're going to run through all of our divisions uh, like all the teams are able to attend. We don't know who's going to be able to and who's not. So when we made our picks and go through, that's how we're going to go through it. It's picking teams that we feel if everybody's attending, this is who's, who's going to be our locks contenders and dark horses as well too. So chat, keep it civil as we go through uh, as this as well too. And also we're going to have a lot of giveaways to do. So between each one of our divisions, we'll have a giveaway. Uh, we have six in the do tonight as well. So keep an eye out for how you can enter those and win if you are watching live. So before uh, we get into the first one, um, and we're actually, as we go through, just a reminder, Archimedes is going to be our first division on it. We're going to be showing different teams on screen. And let's send it over to Adam. Adam, run us through Archimedes. Uh, what are you uh, forecasting that? What are you predicting? Uh, who are some of your locks uh, in this division? Yeah, so Archimedes, 74 total teams, 32.9 uh, for the top 24 average RP EPA and 26.8 for the mean EPA. Makes it the third strongest av average division. And with that very strong average, I expect a lot of upsets as we go through the event. 
Uh, there's a lot of really strong robots, including 1678, 4613, 341, and incredibly high auto EPAs. So there's going to be a lot of fun mashups on that center line. Moving on to our locks, uh, our first lock is 1678, Citrus Circuits, of course. Uh, EPA is third in the world with an average of 58.5. They've won two regionals, nine Einstein streak. Like, they're an incredible robot. I think they're going to go far. It's what they're known for. I think they can make it 10 years. Uh, moving on to our second, we've got 2075 Enigma Robotics. Now they're an all around very solid robot, 42.7 average EPA, really strong auto, and they can climb and trap really well, which I think will help them rank well. I predict this year, I don't think we're necessarily going to see Citrus do their uh, traditional rank first, pick somebody and dominate. I think we could see an upset with somebody like Enigma ranking first and leading that alliance uh, through onto Einstein. Uh, moving on to our contenders, we've got 6036 Peninsula Robotics as our first. They've got a 36 EPA. Uh, they're a really quick, accurate shooter, a quick climb. Like They're an incredibly fast robot. Uh, I could see them going really far because of that. They're just always the fastest on the field. And with that Cali difference, I could see them teaming up with a team like Citrus because they've got that a uh, little bit of time to bond together, to work together that other teams don't necessarily have. Our second contender is coming from China, in fact. It's uh, 8011 Guangji Yi. Uh, they've only attended one regional this year. And in that regional, they won as the first pick with a six-piece auto and a 32.3 average EPA. They're consistent and they're quick. And I think they could go far because with, with no real footage or insights since then, what have they been up to? They're going to have a crazy rebuild to make themselves faster. They're going to have better autos because they've been able to see, but they've not shown too much. Or have they just been drive practicing for seven weeks? And they're going to come out of nowhere and just burn circles around everybody on the field. But without really knowing, I don't know where exactly they'll end up, but they're going to go far. Uh, our next lock, 4613 Barker Redbacks. They're quick. They're at, or sorry, next contender, uh, Barker Redbacks, 4613. They're quick. They're accurate. They're fierce. They're one of our highest EPAs of the division with 43.7. They can't, drop, drop, uh, they can't trap, but that might make them drop low enough to be on a later alliance and be a big upset. They're just overall a really strong robot. I don't know entirely where they end up in Elims, but if they end up being a later pick, I'm thinking somewhere between 5th and 8th seed, they're just going to be unstoppable because between having a stronger third bot than some of the other alliances might get, just how do you keep up with that? Uh, moving on, we have 9496 Link. And this is a rookie team that's just been insane this year. Four banners, a four and a half piece auto. They're well driven. They're consistent. They look very similar to a modified, uh, uh, sorry, a, a modified everybot, but with a fixed shooter and just really consistent uh, aiming. Like they've just been able to dominate at every single event they went to. I think they're going to be the crescendo ninety three twelve, the Cinderella story that just goes through, makes it all the way to Einstein, and just is well known as this incredible first year that like, how do you even top? Now, uh, moving on to our dark horses, I chose to pick some that I think could be some versatile robots, because while a lot of events have switched to primarily offense for or three offense, I think we could see with how high some of these robots could score, it being beneficial to play a little bit of defense to slow down opponents. So our first dark horse is 2718, the OKC E-Possums. They have some crazy defense on the field. Like I was watching one match and they scare an opposing robot away from their own source, steal the piece and then score it. And with an average EPA of 23.5, they're a really solid robot. They're just a little bit further down on the totem pole. So I think they could 100% go far as a third bot, being able to switch between running full offense or maybe running as a shuttle bot or running as a more defensive kind of over by that source like we're seeing them play here. Uh, and then for our second lock, 3655 Tractor Technician. Oh, I'm struggling. 3655 uh, Tractor Technicians is our second dark horse. 28.9 uh, EPA. We've got an over-the-bumper intake that you see them use a lot during their, uh, during their autos or sometimes throughout the match. But they're usually using this quick human load. And we're seeing they throw their human players throwing down at the robot before they even enter their source zone. They're in and out very, very quick. They've had deep runs, if not winning every competition. And I just think they could go really far all around. So then moving on to who I think has a good chance to escape their field, move on to Einstein. 
Uh, we're going with 1678 Citrus Circuits with 2075 Enigma Robotics, 2718 Epossums. And then I'm not entirely sure that they'd get the chance to pick up tractor technicians as well. So I'm going with 4967 Tots. I believe this alliance could go far because it's solid all around. It's reliable. And with some versatile third robots, they could switch between offense and defense as needed. But to be honest, based on past years, I expect an upset. I don't feel confident in any robots specifically leaving this field. And I think there's a really good chance that this could be the end of the citrus streak. I wouldn't bet on it as much as previous years. Well, some bold picks there, uh, no doubt, Adam. A great rundown as we went through on here. So we're going to take a couple minutes to uh, talk a little bit more about the division, bring in some of our other uh correspondence as well to the talk uh, a couple teams that i just want to give a shout out uh to as well uh in this division that really impressed me this year uh 2231 onyx tronics coming out of israel had a very strong showing going into israeli uh dcmp uh this year as well uh miss daisy had a much better performance in my opinion uh coming in uh later in the season as well so a couple great teams for that and one last team i'm going to leave you with 49 40 60 alpha dogs uh this year they, they actually brought the, now they can't technically say two robots but they have two robots essentially that fit within the weight limit um so it, at ontario district championships they ran with their we'll call it their primary bot and then during playoffs i think they actually swapped out to this much smaller robot for playoffs as well too i just think that's really cool and it's something that like i feel like i haven't seen something like that in like 20 years in first uh, i think it's really awesome as well so chat let us know there's a bunch of teams of course that uh we won't uh comment or miss but let's know who we should be uh shouting out for as well uh i'm going to send it to the other uh, correspondents anybody want to jump in and uh give a shout out to a couple teams that you think might be in an area and if you don't mind kind of say if you think they should be a dark horse a contender a lock where's your opinion on that yeah, all right everybody go ahead, go, ahead. go ahead scott Oh, well, I was going to say, the, there's a team that we played with twice this year that's in this division. It's 2357 System Meltdown for Peculiar Missouri. Um, you know, they can trap. They have all of the autonomous modes you could want. Um, they're a pretty consistent amp score. Um, you know, it's a team who, you know, we've really helped out a lot in recent years, and they've just really elevated their game this year. And that's a really solid robot uh, that I think could really do a lot as like a, you know, maybe a lower contender or maybe like a third pick dark horse that, you know, if, if they're around for a third robot, you know, this is definitely a team you'd want to pick up. So that was my one, you know, shout out here. I'll follow that up. I've got uh, not a dark horse, not a, not a lock, but one of the strongest teams in Minnesota, 3276 Toolcats out of new london spicer they are unbelievable they're the most versatile team in minnesota this year they uh they play the rebounder role well they clean up the center of the field really quickly after auto I, like I'm, I'm a little biased we won with them at our week six event they absolutely carried us to the world championship so like you know i'm really appreciative of that their drive coach is unbelievable their driver is one of the most impressive kids that i've ever met uh truly 3276 it, it wouldn't shock me at all if they were a, a captain or first pick of a alliance that came out of this division. Cannot speak highly enough of them. They are unbelievable. Um, I'm going to go and add to that. I do have a a team that I want to shout out. Uh, and this is biased. I'm from Texas, right? So I'm always <laughs> going to shout out the Texas teams. But that's going to be uh, 4206, the Robo Vikes. You know, uh, I wouldn't put them in the lock status, but I put them in the contender. And if they um, – if they get put on an alliance, whatever alliance they're on is going to ruin the event for some people because they're just going to knock them out. They did phenomenal. They have four events under their belt, the South Florida Regional, Fort Worth, Amarillo, and the District Championship Apollo Division. And while they don't have any blue banners, they were finalists at multiple of, uh, of their events. So 4206 is my shout out for this division. Yeah, they had an early exit at, uh, at Texas DCMP, right? Went out in two matches on that. So, you know, you know, teams like that are going to be very hungry to uh, improve their performance as well, too. So, interesting with that. Um, like I said, you know, chat, let us know uh, what teams uh, you want to you see or uh, are paying attention to as well. Uh, before we get into our next division, which we'll send it over to Ryan in just a minute, uh, we're going to start our first giveaway of the evening, um, and that's actually going to be from our friends at RoboBits. Um, so we talked about uh, Canada just a little bit ago. RoboBits is a new supplier coming out of Canada. Uh, fantastic uh, uh, group of individuals I got to meet and talk to a bit more as well. If you're interested in winning uh, a, uh, I think it's actually going to be a $100 gift card off the top of my head. Let me check real quick. Of course, I'm not ready. On this one. Um, so... 
week six. It is going to be week seven. There we go. Yep. Sorry. Uh, it is a hundred dollar gift card to Ru to the Rubo Bits store. So type in free money. That's your keyword uh, for that. Uh, and thanks again to Rubo Bits uh, for giving me the awesome gift card as well. Uh, and we'll draw for that after our next uh, division gets done, which uh, will be uh, Ryan, who we're going to send it over to to talk a little bit more about Kiri. All right, let's do it up. So with our first lock on the Kiri division, we have one of the best teams in the Midwest, Team 2481, the Robo Tears. The Robo Tears are coming into champs with a 28 and 3 record and two event wins under their belt. Sporting one of the best harmony climbers in the world, they more than make up for their lack of a trap mechanism with their elite cycling. Uh, in 2481's two regionals, they've heavily focused on full field cycling as their primary strategy. Their robot plays a speaker and amp at a high level with one of the most unique amp mechanisms that you'll see in FRC this season. Their small frame enables them to squeeze through tight spaces and navigate traffic better than most teams on the field. The biggest thing that would hold the Roboteers back is losing out on too many Harmony ranking points. But like I said, they're so effective at the uh, the Harmony climb that I think they can make up for that. You know, they, they scream to me as a team that would be the first overall pick more so than the first overall captain. Coming up next, our second lock on the Curie field is team 125, the Neutrons. With a record of 45 and 10, two event wins and three blue banners under their belt to go along with the finalists drawn in the Ganson division at the New England District Championship, 125 is a top tier competitor all the way around. Just like 2481, 125 is really heavily focused on full field cycling through most of their events. Now there isn't a ton of footage available for the New England District Championship. Uh, but just historically, they've really focused on full field cycling. They're built well to seed high with very, very solid trap mechanism. They hit it almost every time at, at New England District Championship. 125 had an average ranking score of 3.5, missing only one harmony ranking point throughout the entire event. It'll be interesting to see how 125 chooses to play things at this event strategically. Uh, but one thing that I can say confidently is that they're going to maximize the ranking points that their schedule allows for them. And they're going to be uh, in a position to largely control their fate when they get into the division. Next up, first on our list of contenders is team 3847 Spectrum. Spectrum is 41 and 10 on the season with a surprisingly only one blue banner. Um, but in my opinion, they're one of the most inspirational teams in FRC. Their impact is felt basically everywhere. Everybody knows Spectrum. Uh, and really, they're coming off a first place finish on the Apollo field at the te te uh, Texas District Championship. They had an average ranking score of 3.58 against a really tough field there. Uh, Spectrum is highly effective at feeding, as you can see in the video here. Uh, but they're also a really great full field cycler. They're going to be able to tailor their strategy to, to their alliance partner's abilities, which is going to help them optimize their performance in each and every match. There isn't a lot of separation between the top teams on this field, and Spectrum is as good a bet as anybody to take the top seat on Kiri. Next up on our list of contenders, we have Team 7028 Binary Battalion. 7028 started off this season with a challenging event in Week 2 at the Great Northern Regional. Their robot had numerous breakdowns, and they failed to win a playoff match. A mid-season rebuild turned things around for them in such a huge way. Uh, by shooting into the amp instead of utilizing a separate heavy mechanism, 7028 saved enough weight to make the rest of their systems extremely robust. Utilizing a turret, under-the-bumper intake, and elite software, 7028 is arguably the best feeder in the division. Their software creates a field-centric set point that essentially allows them to feed to roughly the same location no matter where they are on the field. 7028 can pump notes into the speaker as well as anybody, but they're far more likely to be an early pick than an alliance captain because they don't have any sort of climbing mechanism. If they get picked up by the right captain, they're in line to make a really deep playoff run. Our third contender in the Curie division is 4635 Prep Patek Bot Busters. 4635 has been the class of Mexico for a few seasons now, and this may be their best robot yet. Two regional wins, including a week six win with 2481 at Rocket City, has the Bot Busters in a fantastic position to perform well on Curie. Their 45 and one record on the season puts them in elite company. Not many teams have 40 wins on this year. Uh, their robot just smashes into the source every time they grab a note, and it always seems to work flawlessly. They're one of the fastest robots in and out of the source that I've watched across all of the divisions. Very similarly to their alliance partner 2481, 4635 likes to full field cycle to both the amp and speaker. 
I haven't seen them play a feeding role or a rebounder role to this point, uh, but that doesn't mean that they wouldn't be effective in that role. Their robot's really, really versatile. 4635 doesn't have a trap mechanism, so there's a chance that they're going to be at the mercy of their, their schedule, uh, but they should be an early pick with a chance to perform with a really strong Lions captain. Our fourth contender is a little bit of an outlier. 5687, the Outliers, has two district wins on the resume as well as a 41, 11, and 1 record. Their run on the Richardson division brought them all the way to the finals where they narrowly lost in three matches. 5687 is another top team on the Curie field that has primarily run full field cycles throughout most of their events, as opposed to feeding or other strategies. The Outliers are just an example of a solid robot that can play the game effectively. Another team that does not have a trap mechanism, 5687, will also be at the mercy a little bit of their match schedule. Their ability to play the game consistently made them the second overall pick at their district championship event. And I think you can expect them to be an early first round pick on Kiri as well. Next up, we have our first dark horse on the Kiri field. It's team 930, the McQuanago Bears. 930 had a difficult first event of the season, followed by a triple banner at the Wisconsin Regional in Week 3. Their third regional in Week 5 saw some regression, but watch out for 930 to be on the upswing again for the championship. Their turreted design makes them one of the few robots on the field who could effectively play the cheesy poofs rebounder role, uh, where you've got two feeders feeding a team like 930 that can quickly score and clean everything up. 930 probably isn't going to be an early first round pick, but if they slip into the, into the draft and uh, they get on the right alliance, that's an alliance that's going to have a shot at going deep into the playoffs. Our second dark horse and final robot that we'll be discussing in the Curie division is team 2539, the Krypton Cougars. 2539 is one of the best feeders in the Curie division. They are very good in most aspects of the game, but feeding seems to be their strong suit. They'll be picked up by an alliance that wants to employ a feeding strategy in the playoffs, and their exceptional ability to feed notes accurately and consistently will give their alliance le a leg up over some of the other feeding robots that have a wider variance between their fed shots. 2539 might slip a bit in the draft, but if they're paired with a team that can take advantage of the torrential downpour of notes that they're going to deliver, um, it, it's going to be a very difficult alliance to beat in the playoffs. I think they're going to make a, a really deep run. Uh, they're another team that, while they're a dark horse, they are, they're very, very competitive. So for my prediction for the winning alliance, I will take team 25, 2481 as the first pick to team 125. Their third robot, I think they pick up team 2530 inconceivable and team 190 is their fourth robot. And uh, overall, I would say the Curie division is wide open, but if I had to make a prediction, that would be my 14 alliance. Well, great breakdown, uh, Ryan, on there. Some interesting uh, picks, a couple spicy ones, I think, in there as well, too. You know, Krypton Cougars, is, it's an interesting dark horse pick, right? Because earlier in the season, uh, coming in, they I think we're definitely in a contention for the best team in FMA, and it seemed like they had a little bit more struggles at the uh, district championship as well, too. So uh, interesting with that. A couple teams uh, I want to uh, give a couple shout outs as well, too. Uh, I say, Angel, I won't take your low hanging fruit on yours. Uh, but a uh, couple teams that stood out to me uh, CERT this year coming out of PNW, who has had a, a amazing run i think they're i think they were number one in pnw this year uh for district points at least going into the uh, pnw district championships uh, as well so congratulations to them on a great year uh, and i'll give a shout out to a team in michigan uh cspa gems who i think uh definitely could be a great dark horse pick uh for something like that that, that team has flown under the radar for so long and i don't know why because they've been so good for for a really really long time on there so couple teams that I'll give some shout outs to. Uh, Angel, I'm going to send it to you first. I, I know there's a team that definitely would be in my picks as well, uh, but I know uh, you, you definitely want to talk about. Yeah, um, I mean, those, that team, I think this looks familiar to them. It's 6672 Fusion Core. Um, what can I say about this team? But, like, look, they came into the season. They had a rough start. They bounced back, went all the way to finals, won an event, and they just keep on chugging, man. I love this team. Their bot's nice. It's clean. They can fill the role of shooter. They can fill fill the role of, of cleanup. It's amazing. But, um, man, Fusion Core, I love y'all. Y'all are y'all are a friendly team out of Texas. I can't wait to see what you do, especially because they have the experience. They were winners in 2022. So that's all I got to say. 
Yeah, another team I kind of want to throw out there in this division. Um, it's another team that I got to see up close and personal this year and were super fun to work with. It's 7421. It's another Prepatech team. It's Prepatech Overture. Um, you know, beautiful purple robot. Um, you know, this team is, you know, super fast at the amp, has some really good autos. Um, that could sometimes be a bit hit and miss, but when it hits, you know, it's it's pretty spectacular. And you know, overall, probably one of the best shoot, you know, teleop shooters that I got to see in person this year. And so, you know, I think, you know, if they get a good schedule this year, you know, this is a team that could really make some trouble and some havoc for some of those top teams at, you know, in this division. I also, by the way, just uh, Ryan, want to shout out, I think uh, Bot Busters is a phenomenal uh, pick up there. I think they're, they're a team, you know, you get some of those teams outside of US and Canada that are just criminally underrated and there was, uh, I think it might have been week six or week five that like the number one seed in like four different regionals going on was a prep and tech team, uh, at least after day one. Like, holy cow, like it is so cool to see so many of these great teams come out. Uh, and both those uh, teams that you all mentioned are, are phenomenal ones as well, too. Uh, we're not requiring everybody to give shots, but Adam, did you have one uh, at all that you wanted to point out? Uh, I had one that I think could maybe step up on the towards the end of the draft. Uh, 45 Technocats, uh, overall third pick of their district champs, won their first event this year since I believe COVID. A really solid team, but a really good strategy. They're an amazing shuttle bot. Every alliance they pair on, they end up playing that similar strategy. And uh, they can also they can amp well, and they mainly play that speaker. But when they choose to just shuttle across field, they're quick, they're consistent. And they're just hammering their alliance with notes. Yeah, and they had a really good performance at Indiana District Championships this year, too. So definitely shout out to them. You know, you look at a, a legacy team, right? They're an original sustaining team uh, out there and still building uh, great robots as well, too. Uh, I got to interview them uh, week one uh, in Mishawaka as well, too. And that team uh, was good then, but I think definitely has had a great some great improvement uh, over their events as well, too. So uh, so awesome uh, lineup here on Kiri. Uh, before we jump into uh, daily, uh, let's go ahead and draw for our first giveaway. Uh, once again, that was for a $100 gift card for our first friends at RoboBits, and the keyword for that was free money. If you do win a giveaway, by the way, please go to firstupdatesnow.com slash winner in order to claim. Once again, firstupdatesnow.com slash winner. And that's going to be Matt Sprunk. Congratulations. Uh, once again, go to firstupdatesnow.com slash winner. Fill out your information. Uh, just keep in mind, y'all, it is uh, championships coming up, so it might take a couple of weeks for uh, them to get everything out to you. Um, so please be patient as we go through on that. We're also going to start our second giveaway right away, um, and that is actually for our friends at Animark, who are giving away uh, the infamous Animark goat, which I know everybody wants to covet and win, and then as well as they're giving away a uh, Gears t-shirt on top of as well that you can find on their website. So if you're interested win that type in 20 years in chat right now to celebrate Andy Mark and 20 years of Andy Mark being around. Congratulations to them. Uh, once again, type in 20 years in chat. Don't forget if you are a YouTube subscriber, you do get three times luck to win. You can just hit that subscribe button. It's absolutely free to do. So go ahead and do that and stay up the day in all of our content. We have a lot, and I mean a lot of behind the bumpers content pieces uh, still to come out. So hopefully you get a chance to see all those as we come through, but let's send it back over to Scott. Who's going to be uh, previewing a little bit more about daily. And as we go into his uh, predictions as well. Yeah, thanks, Tyler. All right. So looking at this year's daily division, you know, I think this is really going to be one of the divisions to watch. You know, we have two teams that are in the top 10 in EPA and four in the top 25. And so I think, you know, you're going to see some big fireworks here in the daily division this year. Um, some notable teams in the division, you have 27, 118, 148, 368, 581, 694, 1771, 1986, 2052, 2054, 35, 38, 45, 22, and 71, 57. And, you know, unfortunately, we don't have time to go into all of those teams, but there is the few, you know, we want to go through here. So starting off with my first lock for the division, uh, winners of the Gwinnett and Albany District events, as well as the Peachtree District Championship with an overall record of 48 and 4. It's team 1771, North Gwinnett Robotic. Currently ranked number six in the world by EPA. These guys are experts in the passing game and an excellent shooter in their own right. You know, this team is nothing short of just dominant. At one point, they held the world high score of 165 from their per first pluff match at their district championship, and then they outdid themselves by a point in the first match of finals. Uh, with a variety of different autonomous modes that just seemingly go wherever they want to in auto, you know, this team seems ready for, you know, the champs autonomous meta, and I can't wait to see how far this team goes at champs this year. But moving on, my second lock for the event team we hope uh, 
It's going to be a make it this year. We have Team 1690 Orbit, uh, winners of the Israeli 1 and 3 districts, as well as the winners of the Israel District Championship, with perhaps the flattest robot in FRC that I have ever seen. They are number 8 in the world by EPA, and with a 6, almost 7-piece autonomous mode, this team is the epitome of that sharpshooter archetype that's looking to sit back and shoot and to cycle as quickly as possible. You know, able to shoot just laser beams with pinpoint precision from pretty much anywhere in their wing, um, and a team that can drive just about as fast as they can shoot. Um, I don't see how this team is going to be slowed down at all. Um, you know, I think one of their most impressive things is you know their compact size combined with their high scoring upside and you know their ability to score in the track. Probably one of the most important, you know, uh, impressive engineering feats I've seen so far this year, and I can't wait to see how far they do this year as well. Um, but let's get on to some contenders that I think could be challenging some of those top teams. Uh, and fun fact, you know, the fact that this next team is even a contender and not a lock for this, you know, just how shows how really deep this field is. It's Team 27 Rush from Clarkston, Michigan. With an overall record of 62-7-1, and one, they have played some of the most matches of any teams in the division. They've won the Finger Lakes and the Troy District events and winners of both the Michigan State Champs Hemlock Semiconductor Division and Femstein. This team has stocked up wins in arguably the most competitive district and district championship events out there. This team has plenty of experience in both the predominant meta strategies and passing and cycling. And with a robust robot that can take hits and keep on moving, I expect this team will be making another deep run at this year's championship. My next contender for this di uh, division, we have Team 368, Team Kiki Mana from Honolulu, Hawaii. Winners of both the Los Angeles and Hawaii regionals with an overall record of 31-1-0. They arguably have their best robot in team history with an incredibly quick amp score and a reliable shooter that is more than capable of shooting from a distance or dropping dimes in the passing game. This team has just been an incredible form all season, and with the right match schedule, I could easily see this team challenging our locks for the number one overall seed. And I think the thing I like most about this team is there, there isn't just one thing in particular I say they're weak at and that they're just really good at everything they seem to choose to do. My third contender in the division, we have Team 581 Blazing Bulldogs, winners of Silicon Valley Regional. This team has run the gauntlet of the California Regional System, which you know I'm sure we've all seen the discussion on that recently, just how tough that is. Like many of the top teams on this list, they are very practiced at both passing and cycling but one of the things that i'm most impressed with this team is how smooth and quick their under the bumper intake is with plenty of high pressure playoff experience and having pushed some of the best teams in the world to the brink i would look out for 581 to come out swinging uh, at the beginning of this event and play and be their fantastic first pick or a dangerous alliance captain in their own right my last contender for the division from the clear creek independent school district it's team 118 the robonauts with an impressive number of matches played at 101 matches in so far this year and an overall record of 86-14-1, this team has by far played the most number of matches so far this year. And along the way, they've accumulated an astounding eight blue banners so far this season, including both a winner and an impact award at the Texas District Championship. Having just gotten better and better throughout the year and capping off with a win at their district championship event, They've got a turreted shooter and an experienced drive team that I think could win it all both on or off the field, and maybe even both, adding to that impressive tally of blue banners. But I want to move on to some dark horse teams that I think could be some key pivotal role players going into the playoffs at this event. So for the first of those teams, I have Team 1710 from Olathe, Kansas. It's the Ravonics Revolution. Perhaps not as well known outside of the Kansas City area, this team always has excellent scouting and savvy strategic play. Combine that with a well-rounded robot that's capable of filling any role on an alliance from passing to amping or scoring in the speaker, this team is always consistently improving and I will not be surprised if they find themselves in a good position come alliance selections during this year's event. Now final, my final Dark Horse team, it's Team 4920 from Bell River, Ontario, Canada, it's Bell River Robotics. With a variety of autonomous modes that can go straight for the midline and the ability to score both the amp and the speaker, this team would be an excellent role player on any alliance, and I expect them to play a crucial role in whatever alliance they wind up in with playoffs. You know, this, again, like many of the teams on the list, they can pass, they can shoot into the speaker, they can amp. You know, I don't see any reason why this team, you know, if they're around for a third robot, you know, you'd be more than happy with this team to be your third robot, and I expect big things from them from this championship event. 
All right, great lineup there, uh, Scott. Let's break down a couple uh, things in regards to the lineup as well, too. Uh, by the way, this is what an incredibly deep division this is. Uh, I know you can easily say that about all of them, but just looking at like your locks and your uh, contenders as well, too, I think any of those teams could very well see number one uh, in something like this. Uh, really, really, really love the shout-outs for uh, Kikamana and Blazing Bulldogs. These are two teams that are consistently overshadowed by other teams in their state, right? You got Kikamana, very overshadowed for a long time by 359, who has a phenomenal robot, too, don't get me wrong. Uh, but I was really happy to see Kikamana. Uh, th Ryan, did they make the top? They made the top 25 this year, I think, in the final one. But um, Yep, they did. Yeah, so, I mean, the, the get that start to get that recognition as well too from the community i think it's phenomenal with that uh and then 581 who's just had a stellar season uh coming in and once again you talk about how difficult california is it's so true uh on that as well so uh, i gotta ask you uh scott uh what what were your predictions uh, for this division how do you break that down oh yeah sorry um so i had 1771 north gwinnett seeing number one overall and i actually had them picking 27 rush um, I think Rush has just had more diversity in their play throughout the season than someone like Orbit. And so, you know, I really saw Rush probably being the better ideal partner for them. And then I had them picking up uh, Team 3184 Blaze Robotics as a third robot. Um, this is a team that saw Einstein last year, has a really solid swerve drive, and, you know, I think is could really play any sort of role in that alliance. And then uh, for a fourth robot, I had them... I, 1902 uh exploding bacon out of florida who oink, oink, uh, boom, right? you know yeah oink, oink, boom you know has some good uh, has some good tally up and auto stats and i think they're going to be one of those teams that you know come alliance selection their numbers you know even you know are going to be what's going to get them picked because i think they're just going to be up there with those teams left you know being a fourth robot Ryan, how do you feel about uh, Blazer Box, by the way? Obviously, a great performance uh, last season as well. They do have a regional win this year, but their record is definitely not as reflective, I think, of that. I think Blaze and us followed the same path. 60-45, uh, and Blaze were both, you know, top five teams in the state in Minnesota last year. Uh, this year, both of us got the champs as the second pick of uh, an alliance. So I think Blaze is great. I think their team is awesome. The robot this year is not what it was last year. I love that you have them picked here. I mean, they've had a while since they've competed. They're a good team. They could, you know, uh, improve and, and play a good role at a championship alliance. But um, not what it was last year, but I, I, they're an awesome team. I don't want to say anything uh, negative about them because they're, no. they're great people. Yeah, absolutely phenomenal. So. Um, a couple other teams I want to shout out. Uh, for me, a couple of Michigan teams that I think, uh, you know, struggled a little bit, um, especially uh, last year, you know, being world finalist, Strike Zone uh, coming in. Uh, I think they have a really good shot to play a, a great player role in this division. Uh, I don't know if you put them above any of the contenders you listed. So that's a hard one for me, right? Where you have, you know, Strike Zone, it's hard to bet against them. But on the other hand, you have such so much power in what this division is that it's going to be tough. And then the other one is Robo Jackets as well, too. That's another thing just like that, right? Like both those teams are very capable capable of having an absolute breakout run uh in this division here but a lot of stiff competition to go through on there uh so let's send it around the horn uh anybody want to give uh, uh any other shout outs uh in the daily division i feel like the coolest innovation in frc this year was done by beak squad 4028 the uh the trap uh blower that they have is yeah. insanely cool um and it works i mean like they they debuted it and it's like oh is that going to work on a real field but but it does work. It's uh, this year's jumping robot, if you will. So 4028, I think, is a contender on this field, and I'm excited to see what they do. I, I'm going to – of all the robots I'm excited to see in person down at the championship, that is very high on my list. And, and talk about the impact they've had as well, too. How many teams have we seen that have experimented and even put blowers on their robot now at the district championship level, right? So a lot of great things yeah, with that. Yeah, and definitely had a good, good event at Miami Valley uh, taking the win there, too, so – uh, yeah, I'm going to get uh, two shout outs for this event. Uh, my first shout out is going to go to 1574 Miss Car out of Israel. I think they have a really strong robot this year. And they don't have any blue banners this year, but I mean, they're going up against Bumblebee, Orbit, all of them. Uh, so the fact that they like uh, Israel district event number three, they were ranked third and went all the way to finals and lost to like Orbit in Bumblebee. It's one of those things where it's like, okay, they've proven that they can get to that level. And, uh, yeah, I just wanted to shout them out. My other shout out is going to be to uh, 148, the Robo Wranglers. You know, that's got to throw in that Texas bias a little bit. 
148, the Robo Wranglers uh, has had a really good season this year. Uh, and you saw them at Dallas. They did amazing. Uh, I love their bot. I remember the first time seeing their bot, I was like, wow, that looks pretty clean. You know, they, they play both roles, passer, or they clean up and shoot into the speaker. Um, very nice, friendly team out of there. And while I, I do agree that you leave them out of the contenders list, don't leave them out of the contenders list in the back of your head. So. Yeah, you know, looking at 148, it's so hard to bet against a team like that, right? After, you know, what a run they had last year winning their division um, as well. And then, you know, two blue banners this year as well, too. And, and uh, they were finalists, right, in their division, I think, at, at uh, Texas Champs, uh, just losing out the 33-10. Uh, yes. So, yeah, I mean, so it's very hard very hard to bet against them. But this lineup is so strong that we have to make cuts somewhere, right? And I think they're, they're kind of just right below maybe where that cut would be for that. So, uh, Adam, any shout-outs I mean, for you? All right. Uh, anything else? Uh, sorry, I, I don't know who I cut off. I'm sorry, Scott. Yeah, I mean, I was going to say, like, I, I, almost every team that you guys mentioned, I wanted to put on this list. Whatever, <laughs> right. I, I had to make cuts. Like, this, it was so hard to choose, like, which ones to do. And so I just kind of had to do my best finding that. I mean, and that's a tough thing about doing this, right? Is we have to make choices and decisions with that. You can't just, you know shout out half the division for things that's why kind of we we give a little bit more time to do these shout outs now uh, when we're doing picks that's what makes it tough so all right let's go ahead and do our giveaway for our friends at annie mark once again this is for the annie mark goat and as well as the uh the gears t-shirt as well too if you do win please go to firstupdatesnow.com slash winner you're gonna hear me say that a lot tonight because people will still ask where do i go um so uh robo time ski congratulations please go to firstupdatesnow.com slash winner in order to claim uh, that giveaway. And we're going to start our next giveaway right away. It's from our friends at Sword Dry Specialties. And that's going to be for the awesome SDS Timeline shirt. So if you're interested in winning that SDS Timeline, type that in chat right now um, as we get ready for Galileo. We'll be talking about that in just a moment. Uh, but once again, SDS Timeline, if you are a YouTube sub, you get three times luck to win. So good luck, everybody. We'll draw for that in just a little bit. And let's send it over to Angel to talk more about our next division, which is going to be Galileo. All right, Galileo. What can you say about Galileo? It's an interesting division with 75 teams uh, and a mean EPA of 29. That is actually the highest mean EPA compared to all the, the all the divisions at champs. But if you look at the top eight average EPA, that only comes out to 38, which is the fifth top uh, is the fifth highest EPA compared to all the divisions. So what does that mean? It means that. Uh, you got a little dip at the at the top, but the middle, uh, you have a lot of high ranking teams in the middle. Just to give you an ex example, you got 2056, OP Robotics, 3005 Robo Chargers, Wyndham Windup, High Rollers, Team Taters, Team Daves, Aces High, Steampunk, Thunderstamp, Spartan Robotics, the list goes on. But let's get on um, to the locks, contenders, and dark horses. So for my first lock, I'm going to go with 3,005 Robo Chargers with an official record of 48, 7, and 0. They have an EPA of 49.8. Some facts about the Robo Chargers is that they are winners of the first in Texas District Championship. They they ended the, the regular season with four blue banners. They are the top team coming out of the Texas uh, District, and they're in ranked ninth worldwide. Uh, this spot features a very nice uh, side climber. They hang on this on the side of the chain, as you just saw right there in that uh, video. Uh, under bumper intake, uh, very reliable, touch it, own it. And they have a quick five-note auto, auto that targets the center line notes. Uh, one thing I will note is that they don't have a trap scoring mechanism. So we'll see how that plays. Moving on to my second lock. They are no, the drama's in the number two spot. And this team is no stranger to that. It's 2056 OP Robotics with an official record of 53 0 and 0 uh, and an EPA of 58.9. Uh, facts they're currently tied for with 254 for the most wins um, that are undefeated. So in 2018, 254 went all the way undefeated with 53 wins. OP Robotics currently tied with that. Um, other facts about uh, OP Robotics, they were winners of the Ontario District Championship. They're walking away with four blue banners right now. They're the top team in Ontario and top team in the world, and they're the only team left undefeated this season. Uh, their bot features a really fast climber under the bumper intake and a quick six-note auto that targets the center line notes. But another thing to note, no trap scoring. So we'll see what that brings out for my lock OP Robotics. 
moving on to our contenders, this was a hard one, right? You, you had easily two big names for the locks, but contenders wise, uh, it was very hard to pick a, a set of contenders. But let's go down uh, with our first contender, which is going to be 2468 Team Appreciate out of Austin, Texas, with an official record of 4111 and 0 and an EPA of 41.6. Uh, this team is going to be our first contender. Some facts about them. They were the finalists at their division, at the Mercury division at the first in Texas championship. Walking again away with uh, another team with four blue banners this season. They're the fifth top team out of Texas. And they won the first in Texas impact award at their district championship. Uh, other, some things to note about this spot. Under the bumper intake, touch own, versatile uh, autos that range from three to five notes, depending on where you want to put them. And then they're an excellent passing team. Um, they have been, you know, throughout the season, teaming up with 3,005 passing notes. And even at, at at the championship, you saw them passing notes to their alliance members. So I think that makes them an excellent contender for the Galileo division. Also, another interesting fact, they can shoot into the trap. They just got to do it from a distance. So we'll see how that helps them in the rankings. Our next contender for the Galileo division is going to be 3467 Window Windup with their official record of 50, 18, and 1 and an EPA of 46.5. They were finalists at the New England District Championship. They walk away with two blue banners this regular season. They're the second ranked team out of the New England District and they're ranked 15th worldwide. Uh, what this bot features. Uh, behind the bumper intake, see what I did there because we're fun, uh, note detection and path correction uh, in their software and a versatile three to five note autos that'll come in handy when you're at champs and teams can do a lot of ranging of autos. Uh, they can also target the center or the side, which will be great and will make them a wonderful alliance partner for whoever, whichever alliance that they find themselves on. So that is my second contender for Galileo, Wyndham Windup. Moving on to our third contender, we have Team 6081 Digital Dislocators with an official record of 45, 13, and 1, and an EPA of 43. Some facts, they were finalists at Bimstein, have two blue banners, and are the fifth team out of first in Michigan. Uh, fifth ranked team out of the first in Michigan. Uh, their bot is one in the, is a rare one because it features an over-the-bumper intake, but it also has a 4 point. Uh, five note auto that targets center line notes. So that should uh, help them get an early advantage in in qualifications and playoffs. I think this team has has uh, proven, especially by getting all the way to finals at Finstein, that they uh, will be an extremely efficient robot on the field and will make any alliance they're part of really happy. Uh, but let's move on to our fourth contender. Uh, that's going to be Hall of Fame team 98. 987 high rollers. Uh, they're with an official record of 27 and 1 and an EPA of oh, I think I did this wrong because I wrote down that they have an EPA of 93.1, which uh, I don't think that's right. <laughs> so 39.1, all right. So EPA of 39.1, some facts about them they were winners of the Las Vegas, Las Vegas Regional and walked away with the blue banner. Some uh, quick facts about them is that they do have a fast cycle. It's one of the faster ones that I've seen uh, in FRC this year. And they have an auto that prioritizes the center line notes. If you look, one of their autos is literally, let me just spit out my note, go get the ones at the center line, and then I'll score my note that I spit out at the end, which I think is pretty cool. But now those are my contenders for the Galileo division. Let's go ahead and look at my dark horses. So some dark horses that I have, our first dark horse is going to be 96-92 Sigma uh, with a record of 19, 9, and 0 and an EPA of 21.1. Um, some facts about this is that they're a rookie team out of India. They ranked third at their first regional, the Halleck Regional, and they went, went and ended up winning that regional. Uh, I put this team, I, I don't expect them to be a lock but I do expect them to be a, a solid third pick robot. Um, and I feel that this team is going to, to shake it up, right? They're going to shake up the rankings because people are going to see that 96 in, in front of their numbers and think, oh, it's a rookie team. Don't even bother. But do watch this, this team because they are an efficient robot with a 5.5 auto. And they're coming out of a region 
that doesn't really have FRC established yet. So it's amazing to see them at that level. But going on to our next star course, I'm going to go with 9408 Warbots um, with an official record of 18 and 9 and an EPA of 33.5. Some facts about this team is that they're a second year team. They won the Los, uh, the Los Angeles Regional and they were the first pick of the first alliance. Uh, their bot can do amp and speaker effectively and has a very good consistent four note center auto. So uh, I feel like this also is going to be another bot that's either a going to be a very good um, third pick and whatever alliance that they're part of, they're just going to they're going to rock it. I know that for sure. But those are my um, those are my locks, contenders and dark horses for my event. Uh, then the, let's go to my alliance prediction. Who do I think is going to win? I think uh, 2056, 3005, 1577, and 5414. So OP, Robochargers, Steampunk, and Paradox. And I am putting uh, I am putting OP Robotics at the front because you know what? The stats say that they deserve that, that uh, first spot. But I will say that OP and Robochargers don't have that trap scoring mechanism, so you don't know what's going to happen. But that's the Galileo division. Yeah, interesting lineup for sure. Uh, you know, talking about 2056, uh, Angel, you know, you look at, you know, both them and Robochargers, how they did their district championships, right? Uh, 2056 had, uh, what, north of a 3.5 RP average, despite not having a trap mechanism. And I think they got a little bit of help in penalties, but overall still able to consistently do it. Uh, Ryan, I remember you and I talking in the top 25 about that uh, just a couple of weeks ago as well, too, as uh, kind of setting that threshold of which I think I lost a bet on that. Uh, but... No, no, you you won. I I put the over under too high. It was three point seven, and they got three point five eight. Oh, Believe I did me, win after that event. I looked and I was like, ah, oh, dang it, Tyler. I'm gonna have to buy Tyler yeah. or something. Yeah, as soon as they, I'll call that. I'll call it in a championships. Then perfect. So, but uh, over overall, uh, you know, looking at obviously a very strong lineup. Uh, for division. Um, I, I'm not going to steal. I know I, I, I see uh, my fellow correspondents putting in chat on some teams they want to talk about, so I'll try not to steal uh, any of theirs. I think there's kind of the one obvious one that I would probably swap out, uh, but let's talk about a couple other ones. Uh, speaking of Canada, Team Dave, uh, by the way, had a, uh, a, a unfortunately kind of cut short run at Ontario Provincials. They had some issues with their robot that I think if they're in full operating order, could definitely uh, be a contender in this division for sure. Uh, and looking at EPA right below them as well, too, I want to give a shout out to Makers Assemble coming in out of uh, Israel as well too a team that has really uh, uh like really risen up just a tremendous amount this year uh as well too so congratulations to them uh i'll give a couple other quick shout outs i'm not going to go too much in detail uh for things uh and i see one of them's already taken here the other one i'm going to shout out is uh mars wars 41 43 uh who i once again you want to talk about teams that sometimes just fall under that radar uh mars wars has kind of fallen into that category now in that central illinois area where you have like Argos and Roboteers and that sort of thing. Uh, Mars Wars has had a great season, so I uh, can't wait to see what damage they do on their division as well. I don't, I don't necessarily know who I put them above, uh, maybe in the other contenders, but definitely a disruptor team that could be out there. So, uh, Ryan, who do you got? Yeah, I've got two words for you: triple trap. First team in the world to pull off a successful triple trap. I believe they did it in like thirty-five seconds. The Tonka Bots out of uh, West Tonka Mound, Minnesota. 6147. They haven't competed since week one, uh, but they were triple trapping in 35 seconds in week one. Like, what have they been up to since then, and, and how good are they going to be? They're also a little bit of an anomaly at this event because they are tall, right? How do they fit into a you know a playoff alliance at the world championship? But they uh they're they're they've got to be a dark horse, right? Like, I have no idea what the heck they're gonna do, but they're gonna be really, really good. They're gonna be somewhere on the play on a, in the playoffs, and uh, they're, they're a fantastic team. Something I want to mention too, uh, I didn't mention in Curie, but we released the behind the bumpers for 5409 Chargers today as well, too. Uh, so it, you know, I think trap still definitely plays in, in a lot of this, right? And not just in uh, in regards to qualification matches, but I think in playoffs, you know, when you're just looking for those little bit extra points on there, I think that really could be that cherry on top that sets some alliances uh, over the top as well. So, uh, Adam, who do you got? Uh, yeah, just two real quick ones. Um, 461 Westside Boiler Invasion. I mean, coming off of the incredible season they had last year, they won another banner this year. Uh, the latest pick they were at any division or at any event they went to was the, I believe, fourth seed captain. Otherwise, they were always the first pick or first alliance captain. 
Uh, I think they have a chance to go pretty deep, especially because they have solid autos and an overall really solid EPA. Uh, the other one, uh, 1923 Midnight Inventors. I had the privilege of playing with them last year or last summer at IRI. And uh, even when they had a little bit of difficulties in Elims, I remember we went over to check how they were doing. And uh, they just like, they had like six kids around the robot and they were ready. And one match turnaround, very following match, they were ready. They were back in. It was like they'd never had any problems with that robot. It was running clean. It was running perfect. They are an incredibly reliable team. And I think they could go pretty deep as a probably a third bot. Yeah, Midnight is definitely a team of that. I, I would have mentioned if you didn't have that in your queue as well, too. Obviously, I got to, got to see them when I went out to FMA this year. Uh, incredibly impressive performance by them. Very versatile robot as well, too. Uh, and one thing I like, it seems like they're they're really starting to get their cycles down quicker and quicker. Uh, you know, looking looking at where they were in regards to the Mid-Atlantic uh, Championship as well, uh, had a great performance. Uh, there obviously too so winning winning uh, or getting sorry finalists I believe they were on that but going to three matches too so congratulations to them and uh, impact or uh, sorry uh, inspiration award uh, as well too so definitely going to be contender in, in that shot uh, Scott uh, who do you want to give some shout outs to I mean I think I'll grab the obvious one that's 176 aces yeah. <laughs> high out of New England um, just an incredible team an incredible robot you know like obviously we have to make cuts somewhere so I'll grab the low hanging fruit on that one uh, just an amazing team, you know, seventh in New England, you know, surely once, you know, who I think is going to be up there. But uh, the the team I want to give the bigger shout to is 1732 Hilltopper Robotics, um, winners of two events and finalists at another one so far this year. Um, I think they have a really capable robot that, you know, it, again, it can do all facets of the game. They've got a trap mechanism. So, uh, you know, they can they can get that and count on that for, for scoring up higher this year and getting those rank points. You know, I really think, you know, 1732 could be one of those first pick or, you know, I wouldn't even be surprised to see them as like a lower seated alliance captain. Um, you know, I know that's kind of crazy on this field, but, you know, I think they have that ceiling of a robot this year. And so I think that's one to keep an eye out on. Yeah, I, I have to admit going in, I, I think I would put 176 over 987 at this point. Uh, I have seen both robots in person uh, on there, um, and they're both impressive robots. Uh, 987 definitely got better at their next event, uh, but just, you know, when I got to see 176 play, uh, at least from what I saw when I was over at uh, Western New England this year, um, I think their play is a little bit, is maybe just a little bit higher notch than 97 beat. At least that's my personal opinion on it as well, too. But no doubt, fantastic teams. I never want to bet against 97. I have good friends on that team and stuff, too. But uh, phenomenal uh, division overall to break down. So before we uh, hop into our next division, we're going to be bringing in some new hosts in just a moment as well, too. Uh, but uh, we're going to get ready to draw for our giveaway. Uh, before we do that, just some quick last words from our four uh, panels out here before we go to our next set. Uh, Adam, we'll go Adam, Ryan, Scott, Angel, any final words in regards to either your division championships or anything like that? Adam, go ahead. Uh, I just want to say like overall, every division just seems incredibly competitive. I feel like most years with the game, you can kind of see a front runner of like, no matter what else happens, you see this team escaping their field. And even as I dove into Archimedes more, nobody feels clear. Like every single person has a chance, I feel like, and that's something I'm not used to at champs divisions. All right, two for me. I think the Citrus Street goes to 10, and I think the OP curse is broken. I think they win the world championship. I think they're tiers above even the next, you know, the second best robot in the world. Uh, I think it's their year. Um, I, I don't know if I have anything specific necessarily. Um, I think it was definitely interesting this year in terms of qualifications with that third winning Alliance robot, not getting that automatic ticket. And then, you know, that's subsequently affecting wild cards. Um, so I'll be interested to see if that changes moving forward. Cause I know there was um, some early discussion in this season about how that was sort of breaking for certain teams and to, to see if there's any changes related to qualifications, I think would be interesting, but um, yeah, I guess that's probably my one thing. Uh well, what can I say? Oh, uh, first off, I want to do give it another shout out on my line on my uh, division to 971 Spartan Robotics. I feel like they were too notorious to be a dark horse, but the I mean, they're running tank drive just because they're doing that. Don't count them out. They've they've proven that that season again. Whenever anyone talks about the fall of tank uh, tank drive, I've just pointed them right. Amazing team. Uh, what can I say? Hey, Galileo. Hard division to um, to forecast. 
already got people in chat and people already DMing me after seeing this. It's funny. But, uh, yeah, I think Galileo is going to go far, um, especially if uh, 2056 and 3005 team up. I Like a, like Ryan said, I think the, the OP robotics curse is broken this year. Well, we'll look, seeing how all those predictions are. Of course, chat, let us know what we are not going to be 100% right on. We're going to be 100% right. But, uh, you know, if you think we're not, let us know either in chat or if you're watching afterwards in the YouTube comments or, you know, some random dark Discord channel somewhere as well, too. So uh, let's go ahead and draw for the giveaway from our friends at uh, SDS. That is uh, for the Timeline T-shirt. Once again, if you do win, please go to firstupdatesnow.com slash winner in order to claim. And that is going to be... Uh, uh kenta tech congratulations kenta tech make sure you go to firstupdatesnow.com slash winner in order to claim so we will be right back give us about if you're watching live it's going to be about uh two to three minutes as we get our new correspondence on so we'll be back in just a little bit but thank you to uh adam ryan scott and angel good luck to those who do have teams competing at championships as well and uh, we can't wait to see you there thanks a lot guys we'll be right back this video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to Kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. And welcome back. This is going to be our second half of our championship preview and prediction show forecast as we dive into the next four divisions uh, here at the World Championship for 2024. So we have Hopper, Johnson, Milstein, and Newton. Um, and we can't wait to jump into what these are. Just a real quick thing, if you didn't catch the first segment, each one of our correspondents will be given eight teams and only eight out of their divisions, two locks, three to four contenders, and two to three dark horses that they're going to be picking out as well too. So locks are teams that we expect to win the division, probably going to pair up as well, never know. But these are the, really the two top teams we expect. Now, picking out just two top teams is very difficult, and that's kind of the fun of it. So at least I think it's fun to torture the correspondents that way. So uh, contenders, three to four, these are teams that, uh, that really could be that challenger um maybe team up in like a number three seed or something like that and take out the number one seed of those two locks things like that these are teams that our correspondents really want to give big shout outs to uh that are performing very well and could have a really good run in their division and then dark horses these are teams that are typically either uh lesser known teams teams that maybe outside their local region are not as well uh featured or it could be a team that's really on the rise or maybe a team that struggled a little bit that they think is going to have a really good shot as well too so that's going to be how each one of these divisions breaks down afterwards we'll uh give a little bit of analysis where each one of our correspondents, uh, I'll, I'll talk a little bit, and then we'll bring on each other of our other correspondents to give some shout outs in their division as well. And then we do have, if you're watching live, some giveaways that we'll be doing as well too. So lots of great stuff to go into. We're going to hop right in to it, uh, but let's have our uh, correspondents here introduce themselves real quick, starting with James O. How's it going, Fun Nation? My name is James O. I'm an alumni of Team 107 Robotics from the Michigan District. I'm a robotics student at the University of Michigan as well at TAA in the Finn District. Hey everybody, my name is Griffin, a uh, local Chesapeake Kite man. You can basically find me associated with any Chesapeake team in the Richmond area. Uh, currently going to be traveling to Worlds with 3136 Orca. So you have fun to see me there on Johnson. Uh, I'm James C. I'm a mentor and alumni from Team 179. I do a lot of stats and strategy, and I am a game announcer, a referee, a robot inspector, a CSA. I am a man of many hats. I just need to get my blue shirt as a judge and I can make Voltron volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm Evan. I'm a student on team 3506. I do most of the NC hype here on fun and I'll be traveling to worlds with Yeti team 3506 again. So see you all on the new division. Fantastic. So uh, as mentioned, we're going to go through these alphabetically first. So Hopper is going to be our first division. We're going to throw it over to James O to talk more about Hopper. Give us a little bit of preview. And then, of course, we'll run through who your picks are for this division, James. 
So here we are at the World Championship in Houston, Texas for the 2024 Game Crescendo presented by Haas and the Hopper division is back to defend its title. Hopper has seen some incredible alliances in the past like last year's World Championship Mad Tide Alliance or the 2018 Undefeated Poofs Alliance. This year's Hopper field will look to take another historic alliance into the victory books with a wide variety of household names from defending champ 4414, elite Cali team 5940, New England powerhouse 6328, alongside their fellow New England champ 8013, Dutch Giants 4481, Fim powerhouses like 3357 and 33, PNW juggernaut 2046, and so much more. The list goes on and on here in Hopper. Four teams will make it off this field and make a run at the Einstein title. So without further ado, let's take a look at the locks, contenders, and dark horses for the Hopper division. Our first lock comes riding along the waves of the West Coast. It's defending world champ team 4414 High Tide. These madmen over at High Tide built a beautiful turret robot for their week one and two regionals, ranking one at both and winning the second. This wasn't up to their insane standard, however, so they decided to rebuild an even stronger machine. Their new bot, Tide Pod, has an elite wing shot, speed, and everything else you need to play crescendo at the highest level, and then maybe even a little higher after that. They destroyed Las Vegas in dominant fashion and will look to take that momentum into the Hopper division. I expect the Tide to rank one on the field and team up with our next lock to form the first alliance. Our second lock hails from Redwood City, California. It's Team 5940 Bread. Bread has broken into the elite level here in first and is here to stay. And smooth is how I see their robot this year. Their mechanism is flawless. With a world-class intake, shooter, trap mechanism, it does it all. Bread has three medals in the season already with two wins and a hard-fought finalist medal at the insane East Bay Regional last week. 5940's robot Roti is a force to be reckoned with and will certainly be a favorite all weekend on Hopper. I expect 5940 to seed high and pair up even higher with High Tide to form an elite level alliance. Next, moving into the contender category. We have robots that we aren't surefire favorites for the division, but certainly have the tools needed to make an Einstein run. Our first contender is New England Royalty Team 6328 Mechanical Advantage. 6328 is one of the world's premier software departments and a high-level mechanical robot to execute that software on. They also are part of the Open Alliance, which gave us a front row seat to this beautiful machine all season long. Mechanical Advantage suffered a hard upset at any DCMP last weekend, however. They look to extend their Einstein streak to three years in a row this weekend. And, to, and we can see that really from any alliance that they end up on, whether that's the one or anywhere else around there. 6328 will contend for the title and could potentially break into that one seed, maybe even teaming up with Brad just like they did for their 2022 Einstein run. Our next contender is one of my favorite teams in first. It's Team 4481, Team Rembrandts from the Netherlands. An Open Alliance MVP, their build blogs are unmatched, and I expect their upgrades that they did to enhance their play even further here at World Champs. With their data-driven decision-making, this team has broken into the upper echelon of first, winning two California regionals with the utmost poise. 4481 won the Detroit Championship in 2019 as a second pick, and they will attempt to make another run this season on the Hopper Division. Our last contender is FMA Titan Team 5895 Petty Robotics. Teddy has now three-peated the FMA District Championship and has a robot as strong as ever. Their robot, Itsumade, is manufactured for victory and will be able to play the passing meta very well, I predict. It will certainly be interesting to see where Petty lands this weekend, and I expect them to be in a mid-seated alliance where Petty could make their case for a victory on Hopper. Next, moving into the Dark Horse category. I have three teams that may not be on your radar, but they definitely deserve some hype this weekend as we head into champs. Our first dark horse is Team 8613, the Barker Greybacks, out of New South Wales, Australia. 8613 only competed at one regional this year, ranking one and winning the Istanbul region. Their small little robot with great autos, solid shooting, is definitely underranked when looking at EPA rankings, and could be a steal of any alliance that gets their hands on them. If rankings are similar to what Statbotics and EPA predicts, 8613 could end up as a late round selection that would be an absolute steal. Our next dark horse coming from the FIM district is Team 3546, the Buck and Gears from Grand Haven, Michigan. I've seen this robot up close and personal a few times this season. It's definitely a great execution of the Quokka's design. Not only are they long and beefy, they've also figured out a way to score on the trap with a Quokka's design, which is quite a wonderful bonus for this team. I think the Buck and Gears are also the ideal size for a defense spot being so long and would really dominate some sore side defense. So we'll see what that role is on their Saturday Alliance this year. Finally, we have Dark Horse Team 498, the Cobra Commanders from Glendale, Arizona. The Cobra Commanders have a solid two banner showing this season with an Impact Award win and a regional win, both in Arizona regionals. 
and they will look to build on their elite Teliat performance at champs. 498 is in the top 1% of teams for Teliat EPA. However, they lack much in the form of auto and endgame EPA so far. If they've improved on this section of their play for champs, they could rank very well. And if not, they could find themselves as a killer mid-seeded alliance as a second pick. As you can see, the Hopper division is going to be a bloodbath of high-end robot talent. My hot take prediction is that the Bread Tide Alliance that many fear may not be the winner of this field, but I predict that the number four alliance consisting of Team 5895 Petty Robotics, Team 4481 Team Rembrandts, Team 498 the Cobra Commanders, and Team 8613 the Barker Graybacks will take the cake on Hopper. An alliance like that is so well-rounded, and if they're able to coordinate their alliance effectively, could make a run all the way to Einstein. Let us know in chat who you think should be you should be watching out for on Hopper or your hot takes to a division win. Well, there are plenty of uh, takes already in chat that disagree with you, James. So we'll be going through a, a few things on here. But overall, uh, you know, very comprehensive list. Uh, love the prediction, by the way. You know, definitely a spicy prediction there, right? When we look at uh, who could take it, and that's a very strong lineup for sure. Now. Real quick, I want to talk about just real quick story on the Dark Horse here. Uh, James C. is not allowed to answer this. Do any of you know what the term like Cobra Commander comes from? Isn't it from G.I. Joe? Yeah, okay, so thank you. At least somebody. Okay, so because <laughs> I talked to this team last year, nobody had a clue where that etymology of that team name came from that was on the team. Uh, and I just thought that was hilarious. <laughs> nobody knew that. that was a and G.I. knowing is half the battle. Yeah. So, okay. I said James C couldn't answer because I knew he's more of my uh, generation <laughs> on that. So, okay. So let's talk about some teams uh, on here. Uh, you know, overall, you know, picks wise on there, uh, you know, obviously high tide looking really good. You got to see them in Las Vegas uh, and that, that shot that they have, you know, back by the end of the stage area, if they get that locked down, I, that is a near unstoppable shot because you think about how much more of the field you're reducing, not just in regards to your travel time, but in regards to defense as well too, right? And where where you can zone defense on something like that is going to be a really really interesting in that. And Brett is a phenomenal team as well too, so I think Locks, you know, overall is is a great lineup for that. Uh, obviously, the spicy pick on your end is saying that they're not going to win together, uh, but I lo I love that. You know, I love going into let let's throw let's throw a wrench into it a little bit. Um, you're kind of like the Ari of this year, right? Like throwing in uh, the extra spicy picks for that. A um, couple other teams that at least I'm going to shout out, and then we'll send it around the horn uh, in regards to our other correspondents. And like, so I'll try not to grab any ones that the other correspondents typed in the chat as well, too. Uh, but my number one, probably Beer Metal. Uh, Beer Metal has had a, a phenomenal season. This is the second PNW team shout out because I shouted out Cert earlier, who uh, didn't get mentioned. Uh, Beer Metal uh, has a phenomenal machine uh, for that. So, uh, you know, unfortunate, you know, the way that their uh, district championship ended uh, for things, but that, that seems uh, to just be an unfortunate way for both Bear Metal and uh, 2910 sometimes in regards to. Uh, where they wind up at some high level competitions uh, as well. So that's definitely my uh, shout out on the high end that I think could uh, definitely be a contender uh, for a team as well too. Um, and I do just want to give uh, one other shout out for a dark horse team, 4270 Crusaders out of Hawaii is another one of those teams where uh, we talked about Kikamana earlier um, with the other correspondents as well too. You talked about a team that gets undershadowed so much. Crusaders is a phenomenal opportunity to wind up as like a third robot in alliance. Just have a really super deep impact with that as well too. So those are a couple teams I'm going to shout out. Like I said, chat, let us know uh, who you who you want uh, shout out uh, as well too as we'll get through. But let's go around the horn here. Um, uh, we'll start. I'm going to go uh, bottom first. So Evan, uh, do you have a team that you want to give a shout out to? Actually, I have two. So one team I'd like to give a shout out to is 180 Spam. They were finalists at all three of their events and were the winners of one of their events. I think it was Tallahassee, but I'm not entirely sure. But I think they've been a robot that has done really well so far this year. And I think that they have a good shot as a contender. So, And then one other team I want to shout out was 195. I the Cyber Knights. They were not only the winners of their division at the Northeast DCMP, but also the entire thing against the two division heads. So I think they're another team that has a great shot at being a strong contender here. Yeah, 195 did a rebuild at Western New England and struggled a little bit going through. And then they just absolutely came through and just started looking so much better. They were in being an event finalist at Western New England. Uh, and then obviously their performance at New England District Championships as well, too, was very uh, impressive. So can't wait to see how they wind up in that front as well. Uh, James C., I don't know if your pick got taken or not, but uh, who, do you, who do you want to give a shout out to uh, in the division otherwise? Well, first point of clarification, Spam won two regionals one with us and then tallahassee so okay. they are a two-time regional winner but the the first thing that i team i wanted to shout out was 108 sigma cats from fort lauderdale they had some mechanical problems in south florida that made them have an early exit but they were the finalist in tallahassee 
and it really did come down to them or 180 for 118. Like they were the two clear favorites, and this is the best machine that has come out of 108 since like 2005, where That's they a made gorgeous robot. Were, yeah, it is so nice. It is so well driven. They they are firing on all cylinders this year, and they made it to worlds on impact as opposed to robot performance. Um, other than that, just I love the 498 call out. We had a great time with them in 2019 going to Einstein. They're a solid team and they, I think are going to be a little underrated in Hopper. All right, Griffin, who do you got for us? Yeah. So not necessarily a high ceiling pick, but one that I feel deserves a shout out is 9072 tiger bots, which they were, they've come out of the woodworks as a second year team in Chesapeake. While they did not necessarily place the highest at district champs, they proved that they were one of the best shooters and like low, like and are just a low nibble bot that can just get notes to the other side of the field so quickly. And the only reason they struggled was because of the fact that they had such a bad match schedule in comparison to most teams, and that they have no climbing capabilities at this moment. But if they're able to get on alliance and be their the second pick or even the backup bot, they can be a dangerous pick if someone is able to get to that. Well, great rundown of the uh, Hopper division. And before we get into our next division here, we're going to start our giveaway. Our next one coming up is from our friends at uh, FRC 1720. The fixed gears for the awesome set of Bat Hawks are giving away two of these as well, too. I know so many teams that use these. You just plug it right in, gives you that reading, and you can leave them in for a long time with very little uh, degradation on your battery life as well, too. So if you're interested in winning this, type fixed in chat, P H Y X T, because that's how their team name is spelled. You can actually buy these on animark.com as well, too. Uh, don't forget, uh, if you are subscribe to our channel it's absolutely free to do click that subscribe button right now set the day and all the awesome content we have coming out you're gonna get three times luck to win so type in fixed once again for a chance to win we'll draw for that after our next division uh which is going to be johnson so we're going to send it over to griffin talk more about johnson uh chs hype man griffin give us some hype in regards to johnson division and then let's uh run into uh who you picked uh for this lineup yeah, so Johnson, I'm definitely going to be giving some hype too, because I think that a lot of people are going to be overlooking it based upon the lower average EPA that it has. But if I, if you have some bigger, some really strong teams here, like 1706, 1796, 1756, yes, yeah, scouting is going to be a nightmare realizing how all similar these numbers are. <laughs> uh, and then, we, but we also have like some other teams like 1816, 4391, 9128, and even 1477 all along the lineup. But uh, talking through my locks first, I would start off this list with 1706 Ratchet Rockers, uh, with a with a current uh, or current uh, what I can't think of. The, I just blanked on the word for a second. Uh, with a current, why can I not think of the word? Uh, Thirty going 32 to an O. Record. Uh, and winning record that thank you uh going 32 2 and 0 for their record and then two times regional winners from the number one seed at both central missouri and st louis this team is firing on all cylinders of all aspects of the game from a quick cleanup of the field to great shots in this, into the thing and even great amp and trap scoring i think that ratchet rockers are definitely looking to be the top dog of this entire event and i predict them to be the number one seed overall if they get like even a decent of a match schedule. My next uh, lock is going to be 1796 Rubber Tigers with a record of 39, 5 and 0, three regional wins at Hudson Valley, New York Tech Valley, and New York City. Uh, they look to be the best auto team here as they boast like upwards of seven notes in auto and can just clean up just as well as Ratchet Routers. I'm definitely predicting them to be up there and be one of those like top three teams that I'm seeing. And could easily pair up with one of the other three and dominate. Now, going down into contenders, the only reason I have this one team here is because just of a slight advantage that the other two have on them, but it's right up there. The third 17 of this uh, division, 1756 Argos. With a record of 27, 6, and 0, they won two regionals this uh, year, Central Illinois and St. Louis. Fun fact, they won it with Ratchet Rockers, so it's a nice little reunion it could potentially be going here. With an interesting raising shooter design and like just overall versatility with scoring on the field entirely, they could easily go forward and make some dam or do some damage in the uh, eliminations with any team that they pair up with. Now, I think that they're because of the raising aspect and some of the lineups that they might have just a little bit lower efficiency compared to the other two above them. But I think that 
if they're able to nail the shots quick and concisely, then they'll easily be up there and could potentially overthrow the other two. My next uh, contender here is going to be th uh, 91 28 It Can Robotics, going 36 14 and 0 and placing ranking 10th in the Texas district. Uh, it Can provided a very nimble design, like winning one district event and being very, very highly uh, advertised at, up until district champs. They are looking to be a very strong contender on this field. Now, they need to be the shooter, not the feeder, as whenever they were trying to lob notes to the other side of the field, they were constantly going out of the field. So they just if they can just avoid doing that and have someone else feed them, then they're golden. Uh, next up er, for our contenders is 973 Graybots. These are the reigning Johnson champs. And currently, but however, they have not necessarily had the strongest bot comparatively to their previous years as this is the first time since 2012 that they have not received a blue banner going into Worlds. Like, with a record of 16, 11, and 0, they seem to have a robot that has a very strong lobbying capability, but does not necessarily have the best in getting or hitting that goal in, as a lot of their shots often end up hitting very low com on the speaker compared to most. But if they're able to cure that, then we might see Graybots return to form. But we'll have to see if they if they do that or if they just continue on their streak and have this like sort of lower than normal average bot for that like Graybots has. But the last or last for my contenders is going to be forty three ninety one Brave Bots with a record of forty four seven and zero. They had two number one seed district event wins up in Michigan, which yes, there's a lot of dis uh, Michigan events, but you have. But still, going from the number one seed and winning both times, especially in this game, is a really a hard feat to do. After winning both Escanaba and LSSU, uh, they also ranked second in Hemlock and were so close to getting into the finals there, but just got knocked knocked out barely. With quick handoffs from both direct source and grounded, I think they have some really good versatility with getting notes from the source. And but I will say this robot might be a little bit easier to defend with because of. Uh, because of how big of a window they need to set up compared to most teams. And given that their auto is not necessarily as strong as other teams, they might struggle a little bit, but we'll have to see how it goes. Now for my dark horses. Coming up, coming up first is going to be 3061 Husky Robotics. With a record of 20, 10, and 1, they won one regional this year with Heartland Regional. And or this is looking to be a robot that is a low rider as they can like, really go in low and just take shots from very far away, which will easily allow them to cycle pretty fast and get some notes from one side of the field to the other quicker than most robots. My only problem that I'll have with them is because of how low they are, uh, like most like most taller bots will be able to defend them. And also like they're a little bit chunky, or I should say, I should say clunkier uh, than most teams. So it's easy to a bit batter them and get them off kilter with their shot and uh, get them out of the way, but we'll have to see how well this goes. Uh, next up is or for my dark horse is 5010 Tiger Dynasty with a record of 31 19 and 0. This is a team that I don't think a lot of people are looking at, but they should be. After or getting picked up as the first pick of the sixth seed at the Indiana District Championships, they won in on a massive upset tear through the bracket, like even toppling over the number one seed and then and then losing just by a margin to the uh, eventual winners. So I was like, this quick number lot is very, very smart with their strategic amp cycles, uh, like shooting and cleanup on fed notes. So I think that like, if they're, if they get with a good feeder bot, they're going to be a dangerous spot. But if they're forced to run full field, cycle, full field cycles, then they're going to struggle a little bit. But there's going to be a lot of teams here that are going to feed. So I think that they are really in a good spot to be that team that just upsets from a lower seed. Going, at, going into the final predictions, I think that this one's a little bit easier to predict because of the fact that the number one seed is going to be such a strong team in 1706. And I think that they'll easily pick one of the other two 17s that I had mentioned before with, with I think, I think that 1796 is a little bit better than 1756. So I think that that's going to be their first pick. And then I rounded out, uh, it's, it could very much be up in the air, but I predicted based upon 
the averages and stats that their pick is going to be 31 36 Orca, and then they round out with 26 42. And then that together could easily take it all to the end because it is just such dangerous teams to put together. Uh, so interesting uh, pick with that. Uh, we'll break down some of the teams and see uh, kind of uh, where we, uh, as other correspondents, we kind of break these down. Uh, you know, 1706, absolutely phenomenal team. For those who have watched Top 25, I've talked about 1706 forever now. Uh, they are definitely a very well-deserving team as a lock on there. So we can't wait to see how they do uh, overall. But I'm a huge, huge fan of them. Um, I do think it's interesting in regards to picks-wise. Uh, nothing against RoboTigers, things like that. I think it's 17 six seeds first, and it's between Robo Tigers and Argos. I think they go with Argos personally. They're a team that they've won. You mentioned they've won with before. When you have that some of that camaraderie, that can make a difference in things as well too. I get your point in regards to uh, maybe a little bit higher seeding on Robo Tigers who has had a phenomenal season, phenomenal last few seasons, honestly. Uh, so very well deserving of stuff. Uh, 973 is kind of really the interesting one because they did not qualify for championships originally, right? They ended up getting uh, a shoe in afterwards uh, for things. So it will be really interesting to see you know, how much they are able to step up their game. You know, they've been such a phenomenal team in past years that it's hard to get bet against a team like that. But on the other hand, you know, in regards to, you know, some of the other teams that we've seen in the division, which we'll mention here in a second, I'm not quite sure where they're going to uh, line up uh, for that. So it'll be interesting. Um, for me, I think the biggest shout out that I want to give that I would put maybe in that contender spot instead would be 1768 Neshoba Robotics. Uh, Ari has talked a lot about Neshoba uh, all season. Uh, so I know they're going to be in, they're going to be excited to hear that I'm giving this shout out. But I, I completely agree with Ari that Neshoba has had a really, really good year uh, overall. So congratulations to them. Um, and one other team I want to give as a dark horse, 4766 Teen Screen Junior on there, who somehow consistently in the last couple of years has done better than Teen Screen occasionally uh, on that which i always i think is like fun like they're, they're they're a great program overall they've been on an oa and stuff like that as well too but you want to talk about a team that i think could really slip under the radar and get picked up as like a third robot uh or even maybe a fourth robot and just be like it's a team that you swap in and out like in different matches those are two teams that i really got to give a couple shout outs to that i think could uh, make some deep runs as well too so uh evan let's start with you who do you want to uh, give a shout out to in the uh, hop, uh, uh johnson division so one of the main teams I want to give a shout out to is team 2642, the Pit Pirates. They're from NC. They have had an amazing run through North Carolina DCMP. They were finalists and they have one of the most unique robots I've seen, especially in NC with a unique shooter that kind of almost hangs from their superstructure. So they're a team that I feel like kind of blurs the line between a contender and a dark horse a little bit. But uh, they did have an unfortunate ending in NC playoffs, but I think with time to fix that, they will definitely be a sleeper pick and could potentially even be a strong contender here on Johnson. James, see who you got for us. So I'm going to talk about uh, 3647 Millennium Falcons. Um, not not a team that I got to see play in person, obviously, completely different coast, but um, we actually were scouting – every team that was qualifying for Worlds as they qualified, especially people who were winning events at their final events. And when I saw how far this robot can shoot, I was like, how is no one talking about this? They are shooting from just legal. like they And they're, and they're sinking it from the bad side of the stage. It is really impressive how good this robot is. And if they're not being looked at closely, they're going to shock some people. Yeah, that's that's a, absolutely a great shout out there. I completely agree with you. A, a team that, uh, once again, when you get into the depths of California, sometimes hard to see. But three three blue banners this year overall, uh, two winners and a and a Woody Flowers finalist award. Absolutely phenomenal team out there, and could definitely make a, a deep strike on there as well. Uh, James O, who do you got for us? Hundred percent agree there with the Millennium Falcons take. My take for a contender snub here is going to be fifty four oh six Celtex out of Ontario. They were a fun one to watch this year. I think they could uh, make a run there from one of those uh, later alliances, and we'll see what they do. Another uh, M- Michigan team that could be more in the dark horse category, 5436, the Cybercats. Uh, one of their best robots that team's ever built. Really fun to watch this season, uh, so shout out to them as well. I think both those robots uh, could make a fight from any alliance. Um, and I disagree with Griffin. I don't think the one seed will win this field. I think we'll see a more well-balanced um, six, seven, eight, somewhere in there. Um, I think we could see that. So wow. we'll see what happens on Johnson. I That's mean, a- it's definitely potential for that, but <laughs> I I just think that like 
based upon like if this alliance gets together i don't think people realize how dangerous this is because 31 36 went on to be like a sleeper pick that the six seed with chesapeake district champs went to the finals with and it was only because a robot disconnected on field that they lost so i think that it's this alliance is strong enough to probably t overtake anybody that they could do. Well, but, but I think the question is, is 1796 and 1706 a strong enough alliance, you know, with those two to make it through? Mm -hmm. And I think that's James's you know, point on there is that, uh, I mean, I, I think yes, but you never know with something like that. Now, and like I said, you know, James, though, I like the, I like the spicy picks of going, you know, a little bit deeper down in the depths as well, too. So I, I let me ask you, uh, James, so who would you like, give me a team that you would say maybe would wind up maybe in that seven seat or something like that as alliance captain. Let's take a look here. Um, I think that it can, if they get a bad schedule, it can, could be somewhere yeah. in there. Um, 1816, the Green Machine, uh, as well as 1477, Texas Torque, are both uh, teams that I looked at there in the EPA rankings. That, um, you know, Green Machine Hall of Fame team, uh, they know what it takes to win. As well as Michigan team 1701, the RoboCubs, built a great machine this year. Um, year over year, they've been really improving. So I, I think that some combo of those teams could really overpower when there's so much like, claustrophobia there at the top. Uh, Griff, in EPA rankings as well. Yeah. Griff, I know, I know Texas Torque was on kind of your list initially as well, too. What did you see in them? Yeah, so I originally had them on there as a dark horse because of the fact that I couldn't put them in, like, I ran out of space on the contenders list. But with the description you had for what a dark horse is, they they wouldn't have been my fifth contender because of the fact that, like, a lot of people outside of Texas know who they are. But then they, but because of that, they just lost the eligibility, I feel, for being a dark horse. Yeah, for enough on that. Also, a quick shit, uh, a quick thing uh, for anybody who's in Johnson, go to Orca's Pit, ask how to Orca squat. Uh, that that's something they wanted to save lives, so just ask them that, and they <laughs> will teach you. All right, <laughs> so go ahead and do that. Um, hey, before we go into our next division, we had a couple uh, houseworking things, including uh, a giveaway to do. Uh, so let's go ahead and draw for the giveaway. And then we're going to start another giveaway right away too. That's for uh, first off from our friends at uh, Fix Gear seventeen twenty for the awesome set of bat hawks. If you do win, just a reminder: go to firstupdatesnow.com slash winner. Firstupdatesnow.com slash winner in order to claim. Keep in mind, it is championships. It may take a little bit of time to get out to you, but we will make sure all suppliers. Reach out as well too. Dino Fish thirty two. Congratulations to you. Uh, lots of lots of rigged emotes in chat. By the way, clearly we rigged it for this person to win. But congratulations to you. Please go to firstupdatesnow.com slash winner in order to claim. Uh, and we're going to start our next giveaway here in just a moment, and that's going to be uh, from our friends at the Thrifty Bot. So the Thrifty Bot is giving away a fifty dollar Thrifty Bot gift card. If you're interested in winning that, just type very thrifty in chat right now. Let's see it just completely line up the chat wall. Uh, for those who are watching live, very thrifty uh, is your keyword for that. And we'll draw from that right after our next division. So we're going to send it over to James C's talking about Milstein or Milstein. I never know which one it is. I'm, I'm guessing it's Milstein. I could be wrong, though, considering how many times you had to ADR me this year. So don't take me. <laughs> that was as, no. uh, Yeah. So the Milstein Milstein division is super deceptive, not only in its name. Uh, not many teams in this division would have been considered favorites before the division was announced. There, there isn't your, your cheesy poofs, your mad towns, your OPs in here. But it's really anyone's game in this division. So it it's really deep. There's 70 blue banners across 75 teams. And once you get past the top two in EPA, your next 22 teams are within 10 points of each other. So that's just two amplified notes difference between the captain of the second seed alliance and the, and the last pick of the first seed alliance. So anybody having an off game could basically throw this whole division topsy-turvy. Um, not everyone's going to get a shout out on here. Some of the people that just didn't quite make the list are 114 Eagle Strike, 2522 Royal Robotics, 7457 Super Duper Robotics, 1391 Metal Moose, and 22, sorry, 2338 Gear It Forward. Um, they just, some of them were too good to be dark horses. Some of them just, I don't, I only have so many contenders, you know, Tyler cracking the whip, keeping us on track. <laughs> wow. Um, so starting us off is going to be our first lock with a record of 43-7-1 is Team 604 Quicksilver from San Jose, California. 604 is no stranger to seeding first and winning a division. They did it in 2022 with Mad Madtown. They're, they're fast. They're not that fast. Um, they're, they broke up a very popular potential alliance that year in Madtown in 1690, and they totally deserve to as the number one seed. 
and this year it's probably a I maybe their best robot ever. I'm not as familiar with their history as I am with some other. Teams. I think so. Yeah. So my big thing about them is they paired with two of the best best robots in the world by most people's metrics in Madtown and 254. And they kept up with them. They were not being carried in that alliance. They seeded first to get 254, and they were the clear pick for Madtown, whether it was being fed, whether they didn't do as much feeding, which would be as not which would be nice, but that would that's my big thing with 604 is they're my lock, but without that trap mechanism, I'm not as confident that they're gonna be able to get first. Because it seems like almost everybody who is an OP needs a trap in order to get first, and 604 is lacking that. But still, their firepower is nothing to overlook. Um, next up on my locks with the records of 23 and 5 is 94-83, the Istanbul Wildcats from Istanbul, Turkey. Um, their number is deceptive. They used to be known as Bejiktas, I believe is how it was pronounced. And last year, they wound up having some issues and they had to rebrand but this small black robot is so scary if you haven't been if you didn't watch the turkish events this year they are nothing to overlook they're one of the teams that posted i think it was a seven or a seven and a half note auto early on in the season and they just do not stop through auto through tele op they are another team lacking that that trap mechanism but from our internal scouting, they are putting up the most notes in the division. It's just a question of with a higher caliber of average team that a lot of regional teams don't get to play with since there is no district championship between your regionals and worlds. How do they? How are they going to deal with having less access to notes, not having as clear routes? How are they going to deal with being fed, which they didn't have to at their two events? They're still an amazing robot, and they're really showing that Turkey is that next big area to come from FRC. They are going to potentially be Turkey's version of Barker, who they wound up teaming with, to win one of the Turkish events. The next up we're going to talk about are... Sorry, yeah, contenders. Yeah, I... Yeah, I somehow deleted my info on 5712. That's not good. Um, 5712. Hemlock uh, I'm going to throw it to James. James, what can you tell us about uh, Hemlock Gray Matter? <laughs> Absolutely. FIM State <laughs> Champs 5712, Hemlock Gray Matter. They are a beast this year. There's no, they're not a joke. You know, there's a reason they won uh, the Michigan State Championship. You know, you defend Rush in the Michigan State Championship and you realize that 5712 is still the best robot in FIM. Uh, they got a trap mechanism. They got great scoring, consistent autos. Uh, we took uh, took a look into them and behind the bumpers. If you haven't seen that yet, take a look at that. Um, their drive coach was on Roundup this week. It was fun to kind of hear from him some of their strategy. Um, yeah, great team. Um, really up-and-coming team in Michigan. Uh, they're going to be here to stay in that upper echelon of Michigan teams, um, and they will definitely contend here in the Milstein division. Um, I think that contender is the right spot for them. Um, but they could definitely break into that lock category um, and maybe team up with 604 for that one seed. Uh, we'll see what happens. I think Istanbul Wildcats is kind of the wild card on this field. They could be dominant um, and they could fall a little bit lower. So we'll see um, how that plays out. But I'm really excited to see how 5712 represents the mitten this weekend. Uh, they're, they're killer. They're fun to watch. Yeah, my, my biggest takeaway when I was watching 5712 was that they they are super solid. They're super consistent. But it just seems like if defense becomes the norm as opposed to triple cycling at Worlds, they don't have as much experience with it as some of these other teams do. And their shot is super blockable. If you put either a big kiddie pool in front of them or just go to the subwoofer, it's going to cause some issues for them. So that's what kept them out of being one of the locks for me and kind of bumped the Wildcats up, which frustrated me because there's no trappers in my locks. But what are you going to do? Uh, by the way, I'll take the uh, over under on kitty pools and playoffs at zero, but we'll see how that turns out. But other blockers, maybe. Maybe. Um, next up, a team I'm very familiar with, record of 28, 6, and 1 is team 179, the Children of the Swamp. Very, very undervalued on EPA. It was very funny to me to watch as our sister team 180 spams EPA climbed higher and higher and higher as we beat them in Orlando. And then as spam was one of the top 100 and top 25 
and we were nowhere to be seen. It was it kind of very much inspired us to do better during our off time. They 179 has a very consistent auto with being able to do both race to the lines and doing the cleanup auto up front with with a five with a five note. Uh, consistent trap mechanism, consistent feeding. 179 does do it all. And I think what kind of negatively affected the the EPA was that they weren't specialized in one task. So if they would have been a dedicated feeder and gotten good at it, the EPA would have gone up. If they would have been a full-time scorer, the EPA would have gone up. But Florida this year was very much in quals, a game of quantity. You were not amplifying. You were not doing a whole lot. You were just getting as many notes scored as possible. So I think 179 will be coming in under the radar. However, the reason why... I can't even put my own team as a lock is where they're not cycling as much as 604 or 90 of uh, Istanbul Wildcats. They're to, once they have, if that throughput is achieved, then going to be right up there with everyone else as with their best scoring match, they did cycle 22 notes, but their average is only 15. So you can, anybody who's good at math can figure out when bad stuff happens, it happens really powerfully. Next up, I'm going to talk about whether the team with a record of 42, 13, and 1, team 63, 29, the Bucks Wrath from Bucksport, Maine. They won the Granite State Pine Tree and Ganson Division at New England. I think the Bucks Wrath is the best amp robot in the entire division. Bar none, they are very quick at going to the amp. They're very quick at scoring. The They're just an all-around great team. Um I wasn't a big believer in them when I first saw their reveal video on premiere night. I was worried that they were just going to kind of be somebody easily defended. They were going to be somebody that a lot of people would be able to take advantage of. And they proved me so wrong with their, with their play this year. I'm, I love being proven wrong when I see a robot and Buck's wrath is that team this year that really is performing above, above expectations, at least my expectations. I'm also always very impressed that they're from Maine, which I feel like is an overlooked area in New, in New England. I don't think they even have their district event back yet. I don't know if Pine Tree came back this year or not, but just to see somebody from even the, like, even though it is a district, an underdeveloped region in terms of team count perform so well is really inspiring, at least to me. Uh, next up, I'm going to talk about another contender with a record of 45 and six, team 1731, the Fresta Valley Robotics Club from Warrington, Virginia, winners of the Ashland Falls Church and Chesapeake District, District Champs. Yeah, you raised that fist, Griffin. Um, 1731 is super underrated this year. They were one of those teams that I was like, oh, I have, you know, team driven in my in the, this division as well. Another team that I believe I, that I didn't quite get to shout out yet. And I was like, oh, there's another 1730 team in here. And I'm like, oh, look at them go. They, they are such a solid robot. They have a very quick amp. They have a very quick speaker score. They are going to be somebody who is easily defended, similar to what I was say, saying about some of the other teams with like Hemlock's Gray Matter, where they have to do that close shot. They are not showing any shots from distance. So anybody who's performing sub war for defense may be able to slow them down. But if they're left to their own devices, especially as a team coming in kind of under the radar who won't be the like, oh, that's the robot we have to defend, they're going to probably be able to get some of those very hard, I, what I pick to be hard to get RPs in this division with the um, Melody RP. I think that the throughput in this division is very good and eventually it's just going to become a RP denial game as opposed to a everybody's just going to get that RP and we're all going to shake hands type of deal. Um. The only other thing that I am slightly worried about with 1731, if I just pull up my data real quick, do, 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 is they are they are one of the robots who can do trap, but they are one of the slower trappers. So they are somebody who is gonna who potentially could be exploited. All right, next up we're gonna talk about my dark horses. Starting us off is gonna be team 7763, the to, sorry. Carboro Robotics, I believe is how it's pronounced. Carboro Robotics. Carboro Carbor Robotics, okay. Yeah. They are a super simple machine. They have an under-the-bumper intake. They have a kind of kitbot-style shooter, and but they cycle like madmen. They are super quick. They are not. Uh, they're somebody who dealt with defense very well in North Carolina, and they're somebody that I think not a lot of teams are looking at. 
and I'm quite looking forward to see how they'll shake up this division because if left to their own devices, they'll they'll be able to get over half of those notes by themselves. And my final dark horse is going to be Team 6459 AG Robotics, another team from Turkey. They wound up winning one of their events with 6483, and they are a beautiful robot. Considering that the other event they lost was against Istanbul Wildcats and um, Barker, I really do think there's somebody who's being undervalued as another one of those teams from an international area that just not everybody's watching. This robot is so pretty. It has such a nice intake. And having that connection to the Istanbul Wildcats of being a winner with them is why I actually think that the second seed is going to win this division. And that would be the Istanbul Wildcats, Bucks Wrath, 6459, and 1410 Kraken from Denver, Colorado. I think that the first seed is going to be somebody who just does not quite get as good of a robot. And that second seed will be more well-rounded and be able to take the division. All right. Well, interesting, uh, Leo, for uh, Milstein. Um, yeah, I kind of agree with you there. I think this could be, uh, in my opinion, looking at all the divisions, I think this is a division where potentially the number one seed does not win uh, for things. It's a very balanced division overall when you look at you know how deep it is and that sort of thing. Um, it, James, I was I had them at James, so I was kind of uh, uh, fascinated to hear you say that you would put them at uh, Hemlock as a contender. I was really debating, too, if you should put them in as a, a lock or not. I mean, it's such a great performance at, at MSC, but, you know, James, MC's comment in regards to like being more easily defended. Uh, how do you how do you feel about that? I think that the defendable take for fifty seven twelve is a reasonable concern. I'm curious to see um, how they deal with it at champs. They'll probably see some. Uh, for example, MSC seventy six sixty the Biting Irish, who was uh, captain of the Active Alliance on Finstein, uh, did defend that Hemlock Alliance um, pretty well. And the way they dealt with it was kind of switching and using Rush as kind of bait um, and letting fifty seven twelve kind of go roam free. Um, so if we'll see if they can use similar strategies like that, or if they have another solution for dealing with defense, we haven't really seen that much of a rain shot. Like you said, um, that picture there that Tyler shows, who knows, maybe they have something, uh, surprise for shooting over defense. We'll have to see. Um, I'm not entirely sure about that. So I like 57, 12. I think the reason I'd keep them in the contender category isn't because of their defense, but it's just because of the wild card of, I don't know how good Istanbul Wildcats will be at the champs level. Um, I think that 604 clearly is that top robot on this field right now. But like you were saying, Tyler, that cluster of top robots, you know, as well as with Children of the Swamp um, and other robots up there, it's really tight. So we'll see how match schedule and how that kind of stuff plays out. I'd love to see 57 12 take the field, um, but we'll see what happens. Yeah. Uh, James, I really like the pick of uh, 1731, by the way, and I'm sure Griffin agrees with that as well, too. Griffin, what did you see out of uh, 1731 uh, First of Valley Robotics Club this season? Yeah, they were just completely dominant this year. Like to go for, to be at the number number one spot at the first event, absolutely come in with a six note auto off the bat, and then just keep that consistency throughout. I you have to know that like the only reason that they weren't defended is because Chesapeake was more about scoring rather than going for defense, and that which is surprising considering Chesapeake is one of the most heavily defended regions at, or ch districts ever in history but they do actually have the long range shot they just have never needed to do it because of the fact that they're always like going in and either going for the amp or going immediately for a quick sh uh, a quick shot and they're just right there picking up anything that was fed so it's about it while they can take the long shot they have never really needed to so it will be interesting to see if they can take the long shot or not but i think that they can easily sink it uh, and then, uh, Evan, bring you in. Uh, we had a uh, team mention from your region uh, as well, too. I don't know how the heck you pronounce that, but 7763 on there. Uh, what did you see out of them this season? Yeah, so they have really been the team that I think has really risen over last year. Or, honestly, if I had to pick any robot that I think a lot of teams should have built, it was them. They really emphasized basically taking inspiration from the kit bot simplicity is key got their robot built in quickly even with a modified design where I, you can tell their design is not the most high powered or most complex stuff but it boy is, is it is is consistent they have consistently been one of the top scoring robots with their lines and are just able to cycle like mad their intake works well their shooter works well they have no issues with that and i really agree they're an excellent dark horse one of the teams i wanted to give a shout out to was team 
226 Hammerheads from FIM. They are a team that was ranked seven in their division, and but managed to pull through to actually win their division and become finalists overall in, in FIM, which is an enormous achievement with how difficult FIM is. And while they were ranked 25, I think that they were able to really excel due to their sleeper pick with how they are able to shoot from multiple areas. I think they're a team that should be a solid contender here, even though they have ranked less. I think they'll still be a great sleeper pick. Uh, I'm going to shout out uh, two other teams on there. 67, the hot team, had an early exit uh, coming out of uh, – uh, Michigan, which un- unfortunately kind of seems uh, to happen to them sometimes. Uh, but, you know, then gearing up with Strike Force out there, I think, you know, at championships, this team could serve quite well as a contender uh, out there. I could definitely see them there. And uh, I'll give you a Dark Horse team. 1501 Team Thrust out of Indiana uh, has a very interesting robot. Uh, you know, the only thing that maybe goes against them uh, for things is, is their height and the way that their intake is a little bit. But I actually think overall they'd be able to get their cycle times down quite well. So those are my two shouts. Uh, we'll go back around the horn. Uh, Griffin, anybody else that uh, you want to give a shout out to yeah so i'm gonna get out a shout out to yet another 17 team that is from chesapeake uh which is 1727 rex and i think that they're sort of like on the same side of the coin as 1731 is to where rex has a higher ceiling but not necessarily the consistency that fresta has and i think that that's the main quote uh, coin toss that like has been going on this entire season of like do you go with consistency or do you go with ceiling and while I think that uh, consistency has been the more successful aspect, at the world level, a lot of people are going to ha- be hitting those ceilings a little bit more. So Rex might be a dangerous pick if people leave them unattended. And James, so let's uh, wrap up with you. Uh, anybody else you want to talk about? Absolutely. So I'll first like to continue off your pick of 67, Tyler. 67 um, is a great robot. Um, really speedy. I think one of the things that will really help them out at Champs is their Auton where they actually drop yeah. their – or they shoot their preload as they move but they get to that center line so fast. Um, and if it wasn't for some problems with their breaker last weekend, I think they would have gone far at um, the MDCMP. And uh, we'll see how they are in that uh, contender, cat- like go- moving into that contender category here on Milstein. I also think 23-38 uh, Europe forward out, out of Illinois, uh, winners of the Midwest Regional with 359, finalists at the Central Illinois uh, with 111. Great robot this year, phenomenal team. Uh, I got the privilege to work with them on our World's Alliance in 2022. And uh, yeah, great people from here at forward. We'll see how they do here on Milstein. 2611 Jacktown Vectors be my last one from FIM as well. Good Autons um, and one of their best robots I've ever seen out of Jackson, Michigan. Yeah, geared, geared forward, phenomenal team. I've, I've obviously out of the Midwest area. I've seen them many, many times. They've been on behind the bumpers many times. Phenomenal team overall. One last one I just want to shout out. Um, I don't know where I'd put them because I don't know if they quite would creep in the contender role, but a, a team that's been criminally underrated for a long time is Grease Gladiators out of New York, uh, 1591 as well, too. That robot is so fast out there, and uh, it's like them and Robo Tigers are like those teams out of New York that have really just looked phenomenal. So uh, congratulations to all these teams on a phenomenal season so far. Uh, before we get into our last division, I can't believe we're there already uh, for the evening. We're going to go ahead and draw for a giveaway from the Thrifty Bot. Once again, very thrifty was the keyword uh, for that. And if you do win, please go to firstupdatesnow.com slash winner by the way big shout out to anybody who has stepped up to become a youtube uh, member through youtube join either a member or supporter uh just like travis who did just recently as well thanks a lot travis for all your support uh howard evans congratulations uh you have won please go to firstupdatesnow.com slash winner in order to claim and let's start our last giveaway uh from the evening and that's going to be for a ctr electronics phoenix pro license Chipe in chicken nuggets in chat right now. That's your opportunity. Nothing like seeing a wall of chicken nuggets uh, flood the uh, chat stream here. So uh, chicken nuggets, that's your opportunity. This will be for a uh, next season license. Uh, if you do win, by the way, I'll shoot you an email with some more details as well. But this is for the Phoenix Pro license from uh, CTR Electronics. Thanks again to them. And we'll draw for that after we talk about our last division, which, wow, this is going to be a great one here. Let's go in and talk about Newton, uh, Evan. This is going to be a crazy division. Yeah, Newton is absolutely going to be one of the most competitive divisions at this year's champs, and it is absolutely stacked like I haven't seen in a while. It might even be more than 2023's Archimedes last year, Mm. with over several of the top 10 robots in EPA. And I'll be really curious to see how it actually ends up playing out. We have teams like 1323 and 254, which are some of the most well-known teams here. And then there are consistently good teams in the middle of the division, such as 85 BOB and 3220, the average Joes right around the middle or the average of the division's EPA. 
So our first slot can be absolutely none other than 1323 Mad Town, the 2023 the world champions. This is a team that is super well known, and I would be willing to bet that most of our viewers are familiar with them. Madtown is currently ranked in the top five of teams worldwide based on EPA, and they've ranked number one and won every event they have gone to, which in California is nuts. With a new near-perfect score of getting four RP almost every match they have played, I believe that they'll end up really highly ranked. And additionally, they've ranked one at every California regional they've been to so far. I think they have a really strong chance at ranking high and winning the division as our first one. And our second lot can be none other than Team 254, the Cheesy Poops. This team is, if not the, is definitely up there, if not the most well-known team in the world right now. They are a Hall of Fame team, and they are a team that has consistently made Einsteins for almost every year since 2016, excluding last year. They often come up with robots that not only look amazing, but are some of the most complex yet competitive robots on the field. So far, they have won both of their California regionals, which is also nuts. Then they have an EPA of 58.7 and are ranked number two in the world right now. I expect they will be one of the highest ranked teams in the Newton division and potentially win the division. And I will not see them. I will not be surprised to see them jump up with 1323 for a potential number one alliance. Moving on to contenders for this event, we have Team 2910 Jack in the Bot as our first contender. This is another super well-known team that has been exceptionally strong. They have, they're have they hailing from the Pacific Northwest District, and they won both their district events in the season, and they made up to match at 10 in Galileo last year. With an EPA of 45.9, they're currently ranked 19 in the world. Additionally, they have a really unique and compact robot, and I still have no idea how they managed to make their turret work. I believe that they have a really good shot to rank high in the Newton division and can be a really strong contender up in playoffs. Our next contender is Team 359, the Hawaiian Kids from, you guessed it, Hawaii. This is another Hall of Fame team that has had a really good robot. This is a team that has attended an, an astonishing four regionals this year, and they have won every single one they have been to, with being in the uppermost rank too. They currently have an EPA of 50 and a half, having them ranked at seven in the world. They have a robot that is also lethally fast to climb and a trap, enabling them to consistently hit that 4 RP to help rank high. And then consistency is really key in this game. And they've really been a consistent robot with being able to rank high and win in almost all of their divisions, all of their regionals, as this is not something you can do without consistency. Our next out of four contenders, is Team 2974 Walton Robotics from Peachtree. This team has had an amazing season, winning every event they have gone to this year and ranking in the top two teams at every event. With an EPA of 46.4, they are absolutely in the top 20 of robots worldwide, and they have helped set the world high score in Peachtree that reigned for about a day. I think they are set up really well to do for champs, and they've had an incredibly strong showing so far this year, and I think they have a really good chance at making the far in the division playoffs and potentially hooking up with one of the locks or other contenders. And then our last contender is Team 3339, Bumblebee from Israel. They've done really well in Israel so far with wins at every one of their three is dis district events, including district champs. And then this is another impressive feat as you have Israel's super competitive with teams such as 1690 Orbit, which is consistently in the top. And then it, they have a nice rain shot as well. Additionally, with Israel being week four at, to help give times for international logistics, they will have a little bit extra time for tuning and improvements to auto before them and noon. And I'm really excited to see them perform. Firmly despite, believe that despite their EPA being a bit lower than others in the division, they will be a top team. Then let's move on to our last category, which is Dark Horses. First up, we have Team 3937, Team Breakaway. This is a team from Arkansas, and they've had a pretty good season so far. They won their first event, which is Arkansas Regional, and they were finalists at the St. Louis Regional. And they're situated right around the middle of the pack with an EPA of 31.3. With the features that I that this team has, I feel like they could be a really strong dark horse. They have a consistent but not super fast four-piece auto, which is really key in this event to help be a top pick and let the top teams do it. Additionally, this is a week four event, giving them a lot of time to tune and improve their autos. And I think they could really pair well with any of the top teams here. They also have a really fast amp, which I've often seen is pretty critical in any of the second picks here. And I think they could be a really good sleeper line, second line. 
And then the, our second dark horse and last team of this forecast is team 61 610, the Crescent Coyotes. This is a team that was finalist at their first district event and placed high making to match 12 at the technology division at the Ontario District Champs. Their EPA is also right around 31, putting them in the upper half of teams on Newton. They also have a really unique robot and intake that works well. With a four-piece auto that is reliable, that once again helps them with being al along with top teams. And I've seen their shuttle has definitely been one of the most unique, where they're able to basically shoot it at the ground and have it skid along. The ground, while this can be vulnerable to defense, I feel like it can help a lot of other teams because there's less travel and you can more reliably predict where their shuttle ends up. I think they can be another really strong second pick as shuttling can easily be key in this thing. So thoughts on the winning alliance. My thought is that 1323 will end up as the rank one and, and they will pick 254 as their first pick. There's no way that this pretty much won't happen if either of these teams are in the top. And despite there being other robots, I feel pretty sure that these teams will end up together. I see, I'll see, see them selecting team 3476, Code Orange, as their second pick, and team 3937, Breakaway, as their third pick. What do you guys think? You know, looking at looking overall, uh, you know, a great layout. Obviously, not a very hot pick, right? To take thirteen twenty three and two fifty four. I mean, those teams are so good. Uh, I agree. It's it's unless something weird happens. How do these two not pair up together uh, in, into what is the the ultimate destiny team, right? So uh, it's going to be very interesting. Obviously, some stiff competition out there. I really like three fifty nine this year. I, they have a phenomenal machine. We've talked about them so many times in the top twenty five. Uh, as we've gone through. So, you know, congratulations to everything that they brought. And how about Walden Robotics as well, too? Like, wow, coming out of Peachtree with that high score that they had, you know, during uh, their uh, district championships, which unfortunately then got, you know, overrun by 254 a little bit later. Uh, but still, what was incredible to see, you know, I was at Ontario DCMP uh, when the high score was set there. And then all of a sudden, I, you know, I get a text like, Peachtree is number one now. And I'm just like, what? <laughs> like, what they've been able to bring has been really, really cool. So congratulations to them on their season so far. Uh, I also like Bumblebee yeah. as a pick too. I think, you know, for them, that's a great contender spot. And I'll really give you a shout out. Breakaway is an awesome dark horse team, uh, a team that has had a lot of success, uh, sometimes winding up as a finalist a lot versus the winner sometimes, but still a team that could, you know, really wind up being a great contributor uh, to the Alliance as well, too. So uh, we'll send it around the horn in just a moment, but uh, a couple teams that I want to give a shout to is one of the teams that we just had a behind the bumpers with, actually, is 1778 Chill Out. Uh, their EP is high, but I think this is a team that could qualify as a dark horse, man. They just fly under that radar of what is PNW uh, for things, and Chill Out has brought a really just uh, awesome, quick machine, a great shooter as well, too. I uh, love the aesthetics that they bring as well, of course, even though that's not very you know robot-like uh, for things as well, but overall, uh, a great job by them. Um, and then one other team uh, I want to give a, a shout out to is Thirty Fifteen Ranger Robotics. You know they've they struggled early on for things, but they definitely have risen up. This is a robot. Um, when we saw the reveal video on Premiere Night, uh, you know touting nearly autonomous telehop on things, and this is a team that I think could end up as a third robot in alliance and just be absolutely incredible um, where they are. Um, potentially they get picked up like mid in the first round as well too. But I think if they end up dropping and somebody picks them up on the way back man, that's going to be a really tough uh, alliance to beat for things. So uh, we'll go around the horn sure. again. Uh, James C., let's start to you. Uh, who do you want to uh, give a shout-out to? So one team that I think is a, a contender and will be a big player in this division is 111 Wildstang. They are su such a perennial team being Hall of Fame. Like, you always see them at Worlds and stuff like that. But this year's robot is, like, something else. It's one of those things that, like, that whole Midwestern area is criminally under underrated, I feel, as, like, a competitive region. And 111 is one of the best in that area every year, and this year is no different. The other team that I want to shout out is 316 Lunatex. I did a lot of coverage of what's formerly Mid-Atlantic region is now FMA, and we I think we did it behind the bumpers with them at week zero, um, I want to say. And they are a robot that is, like, deceptively complex, as in, like, it looks super complex when you actually get into it. There's a lot of simple engineering in there to make it very, very effective. I think they're more of a dark horse because they have a climb specifically designed to make harmony a thing. So if you're on in a match where you have no trappers, 316 is probably going to be the best robot 
for you to do that harmonizing with. And by the time Elam's comes around and, and trapping is less important, having them being able just to go off to the side. And if you see that score is close, try to go for a last minute harmony would be really good. My only other comment about this division is if anything, it's going to be 254, 1323, because I love RC dearly and I love competing with Madtown. They are notorious for not seeding first in their division <laughs> and then not being able to pick who they want. So if anybody's making this alliance, it's probably going to be 254. All right. Interesting yeah. for that. I think there's a lot of potential for also an upset. This division is super deep and I think it's really going to come down to when you can pair up like Walton and 359 as a potential second or third alliance it's really going to depend on that third pick to really get the advantage with how stacked these top teams are yeah uh, one thing in regards to 111 they really struggled in the beginning of the central illinois regional but then um you know they had a tough time until they got the playoffs and then they started doing much much better in midwest regional same thing as well too right where um they, they struggled a little bit and they started doing much much better at playoffs so i think there's definitely uh potential with them hard hard not to you know when you got a team like 111 hard not to put them somewhere but for sure uh griffin how about you let's uh, get a couple shout outs for you for the noon division yeah so my two shout outs for the Newton division are going to be probably i think the top two chesapeake teams are like going one of the or two of the top two i should say or two of the top chesapeake teams not two of the top two because that, that makes no sense uh 836 robot bees who went undefeated after finally fixing their robot at district championship and won for the number one seed but i think the one to look at is 5804 torch because they kept in the number six seed and just completely went on the tear through the lower bracket and then wound up in the finals only losing because one of their robots had broken but this robot is phenomenal at cleaning up from the floor and also gets a climb almost immediately harmonized or not so i think that we were talking about the harmonized climbs with 316 this is another team you want to be harmonizing with because they can just do it so quickly also a little fun fact about them is the fact that currently they are on a two-year win streak on newton that they won newton both in 2022 and 2023 and now they're on newton again so nice all right james who do you got for us I think I can guess one of them. Yes, I, it's a pretty good guess. So when I was growing up at first, uh, first getting involved, Team 2767 yeah. Strike Force was in the middle of going back to back as the captains of the World Championship Alliance. And once again, they should be in that contention this year. I think they are a fantastic robot. I got to interview them for Behind the Bumpers at the West Michigan District event. And wow, they do so much to innovate. They have boat hooks for climbers. They have some tricks up their sleeves uh, that are going to prepare them well for this week. They got good autons. I mean, Strike Force is an elite Michigan team that is really at that top end. Unfortunate early exit with some troubles with hot, but uh yeah, Strike Force is so good. Where do you and put I them by the way? To do really well. I, I think they gotta be in the contender category for me. I you can't break into the locks, obviously, but uh I, I think they will be up in that one, two, three seed somewhere. We'll see. Maybe they'll break into that top seed and split up Madtown and, and Cheesy Poofs. <laughs> um, my cold take is that the one alliance will win this field. <laughs> but I'm not certain it will be Matt Town. We'll see what happens. All right. Interesting. Yeah, Newton was definitely one of the hardest to pick. There's just so many good teams in this division. And who's your... To, I mean, sorry, flashbacks to 2019 Curie to where everything is just going to be a major bloodbath. <laughs> Never know. Uh, yeah, James, who's your we'll other one? Happens. Oh, yeah, my other one, Team 4607 CIS out of Minnesota. Their robot, um, their robot reveal just le left my jaw drops. It was clearly clearly going to be a contender contending level robot at the regional level um and that that was true i believe they won a regional this year and uh yeah 4607 good robot it'll be fun to see where they end up here in newman uh if they drop all the way to a second pick i mean that's that's just a killer second pick so we'll we'll see what happens with them but a fun robot to watch very aesthetically pleasing as well um so yeah i like that team we'll see what happens with them one last team I want to give a, a shout out to is a team that definitely I, I, I'd like to see in person. They came up to Iowa actually because they're out of Brazil, and that is uh, 1156 Under Control, uh, who uh, is a team that man. When I saw the reveal video, it was I, like they dominated Brazil. It wasn't even close. And then they came to the Iowa Regional. Uh, they were the, the pick of the number one uh, seed. Got knocked out a little bit earlier, obviously than what they wanted to be. But this is a team that you want to talk about a great dark horse pick on here that could slide to that area and just absolutely clean up 1156 shout out to them as well their bumpers are so cool 
yeah awesome right? i love that <laughs> yeah every, every so i good. i really have liked the team as late so all right let's draw for our last giveaway uh before we wrap up the show here once again that was from our friends at ctr electronics for the phoenix pro license if you do win go to firstupdatesnow.com slash winner in order to claim and that's going to be caleb uh widener congratulations to you caleb Hey, everybody, before we let you go, we'll send it around the horn for some final uh, uh, things in regards to championships. But I do want to tell you a couple things on there. Uh, we will have uh, two FRC film crews uh, at the uh, first championships. It is our goal to get about 40 behind the bumpers during championships, so we can't wait to uh, see as many teams. Uh, if you are interested in getting one, you can go to our request area on our Discord at discord.gg slash firstupdatesnow. There's a request thread. Uh, we will not be able to get to everybody. I'm just going to tell you that right now, but we will try to get to as many as possible. Uh, it's just kind of the nature of things that we, we we work our butts off the first couple of days we hope we relax on the last day and get the watch we also do have an ftc film crew as well too so a lot of great content uh coming out and much more to still come uh from district championships in the next few days so please keep an eye out uh, for that as well also uh our two film crews will have uh i don't have mommy but fun badge ribbons and also fun stickers so if you like any of those and you bump into us both are hey there you go thanks james uh, yeah, a couple of you have it. Uh, so we got our badge ribbons. We'll be handing out. Uh, we got like a thousand of those and we have like a thousand stickers too. Um, so our two film crews will have those. Uh, so bump into us, let us know for that. So let's send it around the horn, uh, starting, uh, we'll start, uh, once again, bottom up, start with Evan, uh, any final shout outs in regards to championships, divisions, anything like that you want to talk about? Not really. I'm just, I think a line selection in any of these divisions is kind of going to be a little bit of a toss up because I see this year, especially, I've seen so many more teams really kind of step up and become a really good mid-tier team over last year, where I feel like there's a bigger gap. So I think there could be a lot of potential for upsets and playoffs with a good eight seed of three teams versus top two, a little bit lower down, potentially. I think that it was a very interesting choice in how they chose to increase the Melody RP mm. in that a lot of people were expecting a increase of three, not four, but then the co-op is still only an increase of three. So I think that it was a very interesting choice to further incentivize co-op in a weird way, but it's also just going to be interesting, like I said, is this going to become RP chicken where there's going to be a lot of people playing defense to prevent RPs as opposed to prevent wins? Or is it going to be a lot of handshake agreements of full offense, everybody get the RPs type of deal? Because like, I think both are equally valid strategies. Griffin, how about you? Yeah, yeah I think that, well, to shout out a personal team, since they, they were on the first half, uh, from Curie Division 9709 Isotope, one of three uh, rookie teams to qualify on their robot performance alone and specifically from a district they qualified on points alone not from any award or anything so i just wanted to quick ship give a shout out to them and like how they they were able to compete well this year and my final thoughts with championship is i'm really excited to see how the strategy meta develops as we go in champs i don't think there's really a clear-cut way are we going to do two passing one scoring is it going to be triple cycling is there going to be defense we don't really know yet and i'm really excited to see how that develops Unfortunately, I won't be able to make it down to Houston this year, but I'm really excited to have the Blue Alliance game day up, watching all eight fields. It'll be a really great way to spend my weekend, and uh, I'm looking forward to that. It'll be cool to see. I think that opportunistic defense is a word that's thrown around every year, and uh, I think this year it'll take the form of defense during amp cycles. What will that look like um, when the, the speaker is amplified? And uh, we'll see how the best teams and the most aware drivers really thrive. So best of luck to all teams this week. It'll be fun. Yeah, also shout out to our friends at uh, RSN as well, too, who will be doing their coverage on the uh, First Inspires channel as well, too. So make sure you check that out. Uh, also with TBA Game Day, of course, too, uh, to view all the divisions at once. So, well, thank you, everybody. Uh, correspondents, great job. And we can't wait to see uh, some of you at championships as well, too. And I can't wait to see an audience, all of you at championships, if you're attending. Please come and say hi. We'd love to talk to you. Uh, we're always working. We're always busy. Come and bug us. We don't care. Uh, we'd love to say hi to you uh, and meet you as well, too, and hear more about you, your team, and everything else like that as well too so uh, good luck good luck to all teams i uh, can't wait to see how you do and uh, of course this will be archived on youtube.com slash first updates now so with that said we'll see you soon for those that are in houston and uh see you in just a sh uh, less than a short week so take care everybody have a good night and we'll see you next time on fun have a good night this video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following 
Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu first to learn more and apply. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support.